would like to read to you our statement that we operate under. This is a public hearing and we're the Putnam County Planning Commission. We're the designated local planning agency for the county as described under Title 11, Chapter 163 of the Florida Statutes and we function under the authority of Articles 11 and 12 of the Putnam County Land Development Code. The primary responsibility of the commission is to serve as an advisory body to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on matters related to provisions of and proposed amendments to the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan and the Putnam County Land Development Code. The members of this committee will review each application and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners at a regularly scheduled meeting on, we don't have the date. Don't worry, that's okay, we'll get it. The members, uh, procedurally, we will call each case by name and number. A member of staff will then briefly explain to us the nature of each request. We will take comments from the applicant or their representative followed by public comments concerning the request. We ask that you please direct all statements to the commission and not to each other people in the audience. And before speaking, we will ask each person to be recognized, come forward to the lectern and identify his or herself by name and address. After all persons wishing to speak have been heard, we will entertain a motion from the commission. This motion will be voted on by the commission members and become our recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners will make the final determination. Um, as members of the Putnam County Planning Commission, we pledge to come to meetings prepared for the items on the agenda, willing and ready to listen carefully and courteously, and to make informed decisions based on the facts presented and what we feel is in the best interest of the people of Putnam County. We will refrain from unnecessary interruptions and will be appreciative and respectful toward applicants, members of the staff, and other members of the commission. We will support the decisions made by the majority and will be fair and objective in all that we do as members of the Putnam County Planning Commission. I need to ask, are there any conflicts of interest that anyone has with either of the cases we're hearing today? Are, have there been any ex parte communications with any members or applicants for any of the cases we've had? Nope. Okie dokie. Um, this time we do have an item on our agenda that happens every time the first meeting of the year. And I'm gonna ask Mr. Mike Perry, our legal counsel, to handle this. Uh, we do the election of our chairperson and our <coughs> vice chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, um, and good afternoon, Board. Uh, we have a quorum, and uh, in the interest of time, uh, may I ask the members if there is anyone who is not ready, willing, and able to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of the position in the event they are elected either chairperson or vice chairperson? Is <laughs> okay. Say what? <laughs> Is there any member who would request that they not be nominated for either position? Me. Me. All the males don't want to do it, so this ought to be easy. <laughs> but we have Mr. DeSantis and Mr. Hafner and, uh, and uh, Mr. Danzler that have uh, oh, okay. I need to write down. raised their hands. I'm, um, I got two of them up. Okay. <laughs> Uh, does any member object to the vote being conducted by a show of hands? And this is simply to be more accurate? No? All right, very well. The floor is open for nominations for chairperson. Do I hear any nominations? I nominate that we keep Susan uh, the same chair we had for several years, which has done an awesome job. I'll second. Have to okay. Our chair, Ms. Roberts, has been nominated. Do I hear any other nominations? None. Hearing no nominations, the nominations are closed. Uh, all in favor of Ms. Roberts remaining our chair, please raise your right hand. Okay. All for, no against. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Roberts. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you all for your confidence. Now, the floor is now open for nominations for vice chair. Do I hear any nominations? I would nominate her in order. I'll second. We have Ms. Fortner nominated and seconded. Do I hear any other nominations? None. Hearing none, nominations are closed. All in favor of Ms. Fortner as our vice chair, please raise your right hand. All four, none against. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Ms. Fortner. Thank as you. Our vice chair. You better be at all the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, I turn the meeting back over or to it you. It will be an unorganized mess if I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all, and thank you for your forbearance for that little piece of housekeeping. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call on Joseph, who is our senior planner, 
and ask him to present case number one, which is case SM21002. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Joe Searley with Planning and Development Services. Uh, this is a small scale comprehensive plan amendment. Um, uh, the application was uh, submitted by Palaka Properties LLC. It's them in a future land use map from agricultural to industrial. It's located at 558 North Highway 17 in Palaka, Florida. Uh, the future land use is currently agriculture and the zoning district is heavy industrial. Um, it's only a the, the, the proposed uh, future land use map amendment is only proposed for the northern 8.1, approximately 8.1 acres of the site because the rest is a special flood uh, zone, special flood hazard area and wetlands. Um, the property came to us, it's been exist, that site's been, or the use has been existing as a truck uh, repair facility and office for the last 25 years. Um, however, they ceased to operate their, um, I think it was New Line product, was leased in there for 25 years. They moved, they moved elsewhere, um, and then the owner tried to lease the property. And our Land Development Code section 45, uh, 814 and 13 states that if a use is, uh, a non-conforming use is left vacant or not used for 240 consecutive days, it can't be used except in conformance with the Land Development Code. So that's why we're here. Here is an aerial of the property. As you can see, it's in a, uh, the northern portion of the property uh, is the office area and the uh, truck repair facility. The southern portion of the parcel is uh, uh, wetlands and uh, flood hazard area. The zoning of the property um, is currently industrial. And as you can see, other properties to the west are also industrial. So it is a commercial industrial node so, and is compatible with uh, surrounding uses. Um, the future land use is agricultural, as you can see across the street there on the, to the west. Those parcels are, uh, several of them are um, uh, industrial uh, future land use designations. So as I mentioned, the agricultural land use does not allow for a truck repair facility uh, or something in, as intensive as in that nature. Um, however, the industrial category does allow for that type of use, which is why we're here today to just bring the property into compliance. And um, staff finds the proposed amendments consistent with the comp plan and uh, recommends approval with the request to amend the future land use from agricultural to industrial. Thank you, Joseph. Are there any questions uh, from the board to um, Joseph? How many acres of the wetlands is that? Is that 16? Did I read that? It's close to 16, yeah, approximately 16. 16 to 20, yeah. Um, I have, is that working? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the future land use on the wetlands is still going to be agricultural. Future land use for the wetlands will still be it'll, yeah, it'll remain, agriculture. It'll remain agricultural, correct. And it'll just follow that little curve? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, is the applicant or the applicant's agent here? Would you like to speak? Mr. Young, come on up. Good afternoon. George Young, uh, 222 North 3rd Street here in Palatka on behalf of what we call Palatka Properties, which is a blend of Palatka and Chattanooga, which is where the owners are from, just in case you were wondering. I just thought they didn't know how to spell Palatka when they... No, that was, that was, that was an intentional, so I've been told. Uh, I don't know there's much more to say other than what the planner has uh, proposed to you. Um, it probably wouldn't even be before the commission right now except for a combination of two things. The senior Mr. Merritt passed away during the first part of the COVID epidemic that we were all dealing with. And by the time his son was able to get a hold of all of his affairs, including um, the business down here, he had a, uh, a tenant that decided to consolidate and move their operations up to Duval County. So he wasn't able to identify that and, and focus on it and get a tenant in there within that time frame. So the time frame passed and then by the time they had a new tenant to come in, we ran into this problem and we've been dealing with it ever since. I don't know if there's any other questions or. Yeah, any questions of Mr. Young? Yeah. Thank you for being here and thank you right. for representing your client and explaining how they got their name. Well, I'll have to 
figured it ought to entertain you a little bit. <laughs> I figured Palaka sneezed and said, achoo, you know. <laughs> well, Palaka and, uh, and uh, Chattanooga. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak either in favor or against this application? Uh, if you are, please come forward and state your name and address. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board then for consideration. Erin. Um, I move that we recommend approval of the small scale a comprehensive plan amendment as it is consistent with our goals, objectives, and policies of Putnam County Comprehensive Plan. I have a, a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we're going to take Jerry this time. No offense, Joel. Okay, any discussion on this before we vote? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The chair votes aye. All opposed, please signify by saying no. Thank you. The um, case carries, and we'll take it forward to the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Young. Our next case that we have to hear today is uh, a Codes Amendment Case 21-005. And Zach, you're presenting this. Good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, for the record, Zachary Baker, Planner 2. Uh, today I'm presenting a Land Development Code Text Amendment An application came in by Mr. Justin Morris requesting an amendment to Article 2, Division 2, Section 4559, <clears throat> and Article 2, Division 3, Section 4572, requesting to make a distinction between commercial and personal use sawmills as regulated by the Land Development Code. The subject Land Development Code text amendment proposes to revise allowances for sawmill operations in the Agricultural Zoning District. The Land Development Code currently permits sawmill operations by right in the industrial heavy zoning designation. The current Land Development Code permits sawmills where wood to be processed is, from, is grown from trees on the site of the sawmill by special use permit approval in the agriculture zoning district. <clears throat> the applicant is requesting an amendment to the Land Development Code to eliminate current restrictions on the use of a sawmill as a commercial agriculture related use in the agriculture zoning district. The applicant proposes to eliminate the prohibition on bringing of logs from off site for use in the sawmill. Applicant further proposes to permit any sawmill as commercial agriculture related use to be restricted only based on the horsepower of that sawmill. Additionally, the proposed text amendment would add an additional use to be called sawmills for personal use under the allowances by right in the agricultural zoning district with the same horsepower limitation on the motor. <clears throat> this is the recommendation by the applicant. Below is a version of the applicant's proposed changes in red, <clears throat> proposed deletions or strike through, proposed additions or underline. Section 4559, commercial ag-related uh, sawmill, where wood is from trees grown on the site of the sawmill is to be removed, where the sawmill is powered by a motor not to exceed 40 horsepower is to be added. Uh, furthermore, the recommendation from the applicant is the uh, same thing, strike through is to be removed, underline is for proposed additions. And Section 4572 of Agriculture under subsection C, which is certain uses allowed in the Ag District, we would be adding number six, sawmills for personal use, where the sawmill is powered by a motor not to exceed 40 horsepower. I'm going to read from the staff report <clears throat> some of the cliff notes for why we have uh, proposed our recommendation for this. <clears throat> the proposed text amendment presents an alteration of the current regulations on sawmills that are intended to protect property zoned agriculture in the county from the adverse effects posed by a sawmill operation. The intent of the pres present special use requirement and restriction on the use of a sawmill to use only wood, wood grown on site is to protect <clears throat> the viability of areas that have historically been predominantly residential in character but zoned agriculture 
and to protect agricultural uses that could be negatively impacted by the operation of a sawmill in close proximity. Please bear with me, I'm trying to lose my voice, but I won't do it today. <coughs> the special use permit required for a proposed sawmill on land zoned agriculture is intended to ensure that all of the following criteria are met prior to allowing that use. These are the criteria we would review whenever we're issuing a special use permit. The use is consistent with the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan and meets all concurrency requirements. The use will conform to all applicable regulations of the code <clears throat> and the zoning district in which they are proposed. The use will not adversely impact nor unduly restrict the enjoyment of permitted uses in the surrounding area. The use will not substantially diminish or impair property values in the area nor impede the orderly development <clears throat> and improvement of the surrounding property for permitted uses. The adequate access roads, on-site parking, on-site loading and unloading berths and drainage have been or will be provided where required. The adequate measures have been taken to provide ingress and egress to the property that are des designed in a manner to minimize traffic impacts on local roads. The adequate screening and buffering of the special use will be provided to protect surrounding uses. There will be no undue risks to persons or property from hazardous substances and that the proposed special use will not adversely affect the general public health, safety, welfare of residents of Putnam County. <clears throat> when in an agricultural or residential setting, sawmills could pose detrimental effects to surrounding properties that would not adequately, would not be adequately measured if this use were allowed by right in the agricultural zoning district. <clears throat> if the use were allowed by right, one could in theory commence operation of a sawmill on a small tract of land zoned agriculture within an existing single family subdivision with no review by staff or the zoning board of adjustments to determine the appropriateness of the use on the particular piece of property. Furthermore, staff is not equipped to measure horsepower output in a motor, <coughs> excuse me, which would render enforcement of the horsepower restriction difficult, if not impossible, without additional resources. <clears throat> Therefore, staff recommends denial of the proposed changes as presented by the applicant. It is the position of staff that the proposal below would continue to protect residential and agricultural uses on ag zoned lands while providing an additional avenue by which a landowner may operate a sawmill with the use of a special permit approved without the wood sourcing restriction. <clears throat> These are the staff's recommendations. Strike through is to delete them. Um, underline is additions. We would add on-site sawmills um, with the same wood as from trees that are grown on the site of the sawmill. And then we would also add an entirely new section for off-site sawmills where wood is from trees grown off-site and may be grown on-site off-site sawmills must abide by the following supplemental standards. The sawmill must be located on a parcel of land equal to or exceeding 15 acres in size. <clears throat> An off-site sawmill operation must be set back 500 feet from all property lines. The sawmill will be required to be located on a county maintained collector or arteri arterial road and must not require significant non-residential traffic to pass through established neighborhoods. The reasons why we came up with this recommendation, staff has not made any changes to the existing use allowing a sawmill using wood from trees grown on site with approval of a special use permit, which staff believes that such requests can be adequately reviewed for compatibility through the special use permit analysis. Staff recognizes that there are there may be sites zoned agriculture that would be appropriate for a sawmill where wood may be brought from sites other than the site of the sawmill. To accommodate this possible use, staff proposes adding an additional use for the commercial agricultural related uses, which is still subject to an approved special use permit. The added use would be subject to several additional requirements due to the increased intensity posed by a sawmill that could potentially receive a continuous supply of wood, such as minimum acreage requirements, increased setbacks, and similar locational criteria required by the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan 
for a sawmill use located in the industrial future land use category. The distance restriction would ensure that noise levels are reduced enough for, to be acceptable for residential standards and pre prevent disruption of farm livestock operations. The standard for tolerable urban residential noise level is between 55 and 60 decibels, according to a study published by the National Institute of Health, and is approximately the standard used in most professional urban and regional plannings. OSHA states that <clears throat> Excuse me. That the machinery associated with a sawmill operates between 95 and 110 decibels. In sound measurement, the inverse square law describes the reduction of the intensity of sound over distance. A common way of expressing the inverse square law in acoustics, as further explained in OSHA's technical manual, section 3, chapter 5, is that in a free field, Sound pressure measured in decibels decreases six decibels each time the distance from a point source is doubled, regardless of the unit of measurement. Therefore, the sound level outside of a residence that is a distance of 512 feet from the point source of the sound, in this case the sawmill, separated only by a free field, assuming that at one foot the distance of the sound is measured at 110 decibels, would theoretically be 56 decibels. Any such sawmill operation would be required to be reviewed by and receive approval from the Development Review Committee and may be required to provide roadway improvements to maintain minimum adopted levels of service and minimum facility standards as allowed by Article 5 of the Land Development Code of the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan. Staff recommends approval of staff suggestions, staff suggested revisions to LDC Section 4559. Are there questions of staff? I have one question. Um, in the revision, you were talking about uh, monitoring the traffic. Um, how would that be done? We would uh, ask the applicant to complete a concurrency application in which we would give that application to Public Works and have them assess whether or not the proposed incoming traffic would pose any sort of uh, deterioration in the level of service of those roads. Okay. And if it does, would the owner of the sawmill be liable for uh, helping to remedy those problems? Yes, ma'am. It would be the applicant's responsibility to pay to have whatever road improvements made. To is, offset. is that in your proposal? It would be in the special use criteria whenever we okay. review that. Okay. Would there be periodic checks or is it just the one time? Just the one time that I know of, sir. Public Works wouldn't monitor this on an annual basis or something like that, or is that too much to put on Public Works? If I may. Uh, Public Works, Madam Chair, would not monitor that on an annual basis. Um, they would, so the applicant, any operator has a responsibility to maintain level of service, um, and they are approved for a certain impact through their concurrency evaluation and through the development review process. So they have to maintain that impact. If they increase the impact, they would have to go back to the, the Development Review Committee to ensure that um, any <clears throat> impacts are mitigated uh, through improvements or any other. So this would be self-monitored? Yeah. Well, the, it, actually, I guess anybody that lives around there would be able to uh, file uh, protest or something if, if it was exceeding what it should be. Someone could. Uh, file a code enforce or uh, a code complaint. So, the way I understand it now is if somebody goes into an agricultural area, they're wanting to use a sawmill to bring in trees that's not grown on the property, they have to get a special use permit. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And, and the trees could only be sourced from on site as it stands that's now. Correct. Yes, sir. So uh, we, we're adding a use. We're maintaining the on-site sawmill would be left alone. They wouldn't have the additional criteria. We would be adding a use called the off-site sawmill where they could source from off-site and on-site, and they would have to meet those criteria. So it wouldn't just be carte blanche? Correct. 
Okay. I got, I got one. Mr. Swing, you want to talk into the microphone? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I'll turn it on. <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, light's really good. Uh, question. It says something about personal use. And what I'm looking, hearing what you're saying, it's more like a commercial business. Correct. Um, are we are we looking for personal use? Like if I've got a hundred acres and I've seen these little sawmills, is that what we're talking about, or are we talking about employees and things? So the applicant's proposal um, would add a use in there, which we are not recommending, called a personal sawmill, um, and personal sawmills as an ancillary use to a residential property are already allowed. We don't have to call it out in the code um, to allow that, just as we wouldn't call out any other ancillary, or, well, I shouldn't say any other, but s many other ancillary uses um, in the code, hobby uses. Um, as long as they don't pass the threshold of being commercial, then they would be fine. Um, but what we're recommending is Yes, allowance of a commercial sawmill in agriculture with those restrictions, just so that we, we, we could allow um, off-site sourcing of wood. Um, with those restrictions, staff doesn't believe that it would be any kind of um, nuisance. Um, but that's not what he's asking for, is that? Correct. Uh, well, no, th there are two proposals in there. There's a proposal to add a personal sawmill, and then there's a proposal to add a uh, sawmill without a special use permit up to 40 horsepower by right in the agriculture uh, zoning district. And include off-site lumber. Correct. Off -site timber. Yeah. That's right. It would remove that restriction for that use. But we don't have employees under what he's proposing. We're not, we, we have no employees. It's, if he wants to go in his backyard and cut up a tree, he can, he can do that now. Correct. As a, as a hobby uh, sawmill, or excuse me, a hobby saw, not a sawmill. I, I don't want to get those two confused. A hobby saw. Yes. For personal so use. use uh, personal use of a saw. This is the 40 horsepower thing you're talking about. That's what the applicant, well, no, no, no. The applicant has proposed two different uses. There's a addition of a, a hobby saw, and then which is called a hobby sawmill, and then there's the addition of um, the striking of where wood is uh, sourced from on site, or mm -hmm. I, that, that, I think that's what that says, and um, the addition of language stating that um, the, anyone could operate a, a sawmill up to 40 horsepower in an agricultural district without the need for a special use permit. For personal use? Uh, that, that's not what the language says. Um, I, I believe the applicant specified. could probably explain that better than I could what the intent of that is, but the reason that we recommend a denial of that is because the language doesn't say that. Um, and for personal use, the, uh, the use of a saw is already um, allowed. And we're looking at a change to the land development code, which would apply to anything coming forward. It would not just apply to this single applicant. This is not a special use permit we're looking at. We're looking at changing the code so that everybody down the road would have these same privileges. And we don't have that now. I mean, if I wanted to go in my backyard, I have over the 15 acres. I don't really know exactly what this hobby saw is, but we're gonna, I'm going to assume it's under this 40 horsepower thing. I can do that right now. We don't need to do anything. Well, we don't have any language of referring to a horsepower now, but correct. You could go, you could use um, intermittently a saw in your backyard as long as it did not become a nuisance to your neighbors. You could use a saw um, just to create personal crafts or um, anything. I mean, anything that you wanted to use in your home. You wanted to as mill as lumber to, for your house. You as could. As long as you got the lumber off of your own land. Precise. Well, no, it's it's not. I don't want to. So that's the use that requires a special use permit. Um, but if you're using just, uh, if you're using a saw intermittently or for a project, 
building something for your house, you've pulled a, an owner builder permit and you want to furnish your house or add trim to your house, you can do that now and it doesn't have to be sourced uh, from on site. Mm -hmm. You could go buy the lumber, you could have a friend give you a, a log. Um, and make your trim. But, correct. But if, I mean, if I read it correct, currently it says sawmill where wood is grown from trees, but that's not just a saw, that's like you're milling the wood. Correct. The and, and we have a definition for sawmill in the code that okay. explains that that's a lot more than simply just a, a, a personal a use. Correct. Exactly. Is there, is there a restriction for how many saw mills can be put on a certain size piece of property at all? Um, you know, you could run that 110 decibels to 330 to put three saw mills. <laughs> so currently, um, the restriction would be placed by the Zoning Board of Adjustments. It's assumed that when someone comes in for a special use permit, they, they're only asking for one. For one. Um, and certainly, we would recommend conditioning it if they requested more than one. And if we analyzed it through our analysis, we saw that it would be burdensome to neighbors or detrimental in some way, we would condition that it be only one. But, but if we went with what the applicant is, is making an applicant for, is there any restriction in how many sawmills to put on a piece of property? No, sir. The, so the, the sawmill as proposed by the applicant would be allowed by right. It would re require no review by staff um, or the ZBOA to determine the appropriateness of the land. Um, they would likely still have to go through DRC, but the DRC, the Development Review Committee, can't really control uses as much as you can at the zoning stage. So to recap, what we're looking at is an applicant has requested to amend the current language and it's staff recommendation that we deny that particular request and that we substitute that section in the code with what Zach has outlined for us. Yes, ma'am. That's kind of drawing it down to a nutshell. And the advantage of the special use permit is that everybody around adjacent landowners and stuff would be notified that special yes, use right. being applied Yes, sir. For. Now, there's no employees involved in any form of like there could be um, if see I would have a problem with employees I mean I'd be for if I wanted to do something or you want to do something on your property I have no problem with that part of it but I'm not I don't want to run an ad and hire three or four guys to come now it becomes a commercial <coughs> business and that I would object to but as far as as you call it a hobby, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I would call it well, a I'm hobby. Well, I'm, I'm using it more, uh, I'm using the, the applicant's words, but okay. yeah, I mean, I think right. the applicant intends to say that it's just a, um, a personal use. Right. Well, personal use, I personally don't have a problem with the personal use. I would have a big problem with a, a commercial use, and that commercial use would definitely kick in if you had employees. Right. And you would and that would be they would rec be required to have a business license for that. No, ma'am. Uh, the right. county ceased collecting business licenses. They don't have them anymore. Okay. 2017. Madam I think. Chairperson. Yes, sir. I think the biggest concern I would have is this going to be a business where they're going to be selling lumber off the property. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like, and, and that that's the big question I would have. Is it a business right. well, to be a lumber yard? Well, and that if we if we do this. It would apply to anybody who wanted to do it they down the road, do not, so not just this particular applicant. Opening up a business on a piece of property, 15 acres or more, where they were going to import trees from tree mm -hmm. cutters, chop it up, make lumber, and sell it. So you're looking at a commercial operation no matter how you cut it. It so could well a, be that, yes. Yeah. That's the and you're going to give them open, an open way to do it because there's nobody double-checking it. So I would have a problem unless we hear from the developer, from the okay. so as we can I understand the first one pretty good. I'm, I'm with what you're proposing to do. Why are you trying to change the just the special use permit? The special use permit it seems like that would be the best scenario because yeah. each property is looked at individually. individually and mm -hmm. so there's some agricultural purpose properties that yeah, I think it'd be great if they wanted to put a sawmill, but if they want to go into a subdivision that we're zoned agriculture. Almost have to be an individual basis versus 
trying to make it united. I, I'm, mm. I guess I'm asking why do y'all want to change it? So th we proposed the changes only to satisfy what, what was perceived as a need to allow off-site sourcing of wood. Uh, we had a, a special use permit come before us recently, probably back in October, and the individual was not able to source from off-site. Now, that site would not have been appropriate for off-site sourcing, but um, we did see a need, uh, a, p a potential need in the county to allow off-site sourcing of wood in agricultural areas if they were vast areas that were sufficiently separated from residential uses um, and could be buffered and, and um, sound could be mitigated in the manner that we proposed. So we're proposing, just to, I guess to, to summarize what I, what I uh, previously said, uh, hobby sawmills or personal use of, excuse me, hobby saws I should say, personal use of a saw as a hobby is already allowed. It's never been a problem. We've never, to my knowledge, had a code case on the personal use of a saw for, as a hobby um, or to furnish your house in some way. Um, so then we saw a potential need and so we proposed our alternative, which is not exactly the exact opposite of what the applicant is requesting. I believe the applicant simply wanted to add um, the use of a hobby saw, one, to clarify that it was allowed, and two, the, the second use was to allow off-site sourcing of wood. Now, I, the applicants can speak to that better than I can. I know the initial frustration or, or desire was to allow, to be able to allow off-site sourcing of wood, and that's why we, uh, the staff started exploring that. Okay, let me ask a question. And nowhere in your proposed change that you're proposing as a substitution, does it say anything about special use permit being required for this? So um, all commercial agricultural uses are listed as required. You, you have to have a special use permit. It's listed above. Okay. So any kind of commercial uh, agri agricultural use would be required to have. So a if a sawmill were to be created under the proposed code, it would still require a special use permit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Both in the current code that restricts to only on-site and ag and in the pr proposed code where we are, we're adding a use. Both okay. would have to... Both be. would require a special use permit through the ZBOA. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If it's commercial, I have no problem with that, requiring that special use permit. But if it's... If we want to do it in my backyard, which I don't think I could do anyway, but if I had the capabilities mm -hmm. to push something through there and, and get a straight cut. I think the difference is if you were bringing in lumber or timber from off-site, the special use permit would be necessary because you would be coming through transporting that timber through other land to get to your site rather than just sourcing that, that lumber from on-site, that timber from on-site. Well, when I go to Home Depot and I transport these wood, wood from there to my site, and then I, I, I run it through planers and things like sure. that. To that's personal hobby use. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what you just described. Well, no, I'm not, I was describing an 18-wheeler bringing, bringing full logs, big, 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 bringing, big log, trees. bringing trees in, yeah. bringing the logs in to be milled. Are these, I need to ask the applicant. We will in a minute, as soon as we I finish, mean, I, I, we will. I'm confused on what okay. I'm we're, we'll we'll get to you in just a minute as soon as we finish working with staff. So right now, anything would require a special use permit. Am I correct? Um, not not a, a an ancillary use of a saw. Right, so, not a personal use right. of a saw. I mean, I can take my circular saw okay. into my garage and I can cut a two by four, mm -hmm. and that's not going to have a problem. I can take my table saw and cut plywood. It's not going to have a problem. But if I were to be bringing in timber from across the street or from somebody else's property, then it becomes a problem. Correct, a commercial use, a commercial continuous use. operation. And there's commercial. Yeah, it, okay. and the commercial, is there, a, do we key that to employees or to sales? No, sir, well, we key that to the, the uh, uh, definition of a sawmill. So we would not consider a personal use a sawmill. Okay. 
Anything else to ask of staff before you bring the applicant up to speak? I'm a little confused. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Danzler's got the floor. No, right. that doesn't require a permit or anything. Yeah. But when you bring a sawmill in and you bring in bring in uh, timber from offsite, do we have a picture? Does anybody have a picture of what a sawmill is? Because my what I'm thinking of a sawmill is, I I, I, I think it's it, it's a big machine, <laughs> it's a big blade on a conveyor belt that runs wood through it to cut it into dimensional lumber. Now they have a lot of them are big bandsaws too. The bandsaws yeah. just run yeah. through them. Right. Either a blade or a bandsaw. Yeah. Okay. And there was one close to my house 10 years ago, maybe. And it was nothing what I would consider big. It was like a little toy type thing. And they, they had trees and they, they made like two befores out of them. That's, that's mm -hmm. a sawmill that mills was, the wood. It was very small. It wasn't it nothing. Much these days. It, it can be the size of a small table saw. Right. Small ones and they've got commercial ones. They've got big ones and they've got little ones. Yeah. And yeah. it depends on how much volume the person wants to cut and how much money he wants to put out. The horsepower, you said you didn't have no way to tell what the horsepower is? Well, we can tell by looking at the, the, I mean, the motor etching on the side. Stamped on it. Correct, but we, we don't have the staff resources to be constantly monitoring right. whether they have increase the horsepower or we are expecting self-monitoring of this until there's a complaint then we check it out and if there's a problem with it then we go to a codes violation but in the meantime i think we've pretty much beat the horse to death up here uh can we bring the applicant up and please come up and state your name and address for the record and give us your presentation and tell us your side of the story uh, everything y'all talk about here I, I, I intend on addressing my name is justin morris uh, I live at 180 Stokes Landon Road in Palatka. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm a general contractor. Uh, I've been a building inspector for the county for years. I'm currently the building official for the town of Malacca, so I'm not just some John Q. citizen coming up here uh, without the ability to understand what the Land Development Code and interpretation of codes and how these things go. I, I, it's part of my job that I do every day. So. Um, let me get this presentation. Where am I at there, Gabriel? Got a little box in the oh, there it is. I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. Uh, it's file manager. That stick. There's the presentation. Hopefully everything will translate from my Mac to this computer. And <coughs> You're up just All about. Right, so we might get to actually see this. Let's get rid of that. Not the little screen. Slideshow. Where do I see slideshow? There it is. Maybe. Zach, can you help him out there? Yeah, any any help here would be appreciated. I, this is the opposite of what mine is. Where'd your daughter go? Let's bring her back. Yeah, no kidding. Can we see it there? Okay, all right. Okay. So, land development codes. We're here to change some land development codes. Uh, I'm gonna touch on some of the things that I'm gonna address. We're gonna address the purpose of these changes, uh, deficiencies in the current land development code. We're gonna define different classes of sawmills, which is what I think you guys were kind of having an issue with up here. Um, I wanted to make a note that the only zoning district we are talking about is ag. So you were mentioning residential areas and this and that. We are the only zoning district we are talking about in this whole thing. We do have residents in, in agriculture zoning. Though. Yeah, yes, ma'am. No, I, no, I understand the difference between use uh, and um, and the zoning districts, but uh, notice that we're not trying to put 
sawmills into residential areas or or into uh, other zoning districts other than ag where in most cases you would expect agriculture related uh, activities to occur um, the ultimate goal of what I'm doing here today is exactly this SUP should not be required for small scale mills and I'll get into what a small scale mill is here in just a few minutes but that in in the grand scheme of what I am doing here today that is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it where we are not extending a over-regulation to what is in effect an, an agricultural tool, not, a, um, not anything beyond what would normally be seen on a farm or, or some other uh, farm-related equipment. Uh, and it, it, another important note is to note that code enforcement can still regulate commercial use, truly commercial use, will come in through a codes complaint. They have the ability to go out and say, yes, they are having a commercial use um, and can regulate that through a special use permit. Purpose of the change. The purpose of the change is not to require SUP for small scale mill. Uh, the proposed changes will allow many Putnam County citizens to continue use of equipment already in operation without being in violation of current land development codes. And when I say a lot of citizens, there are dozens of these small scale portable mills throughout Putnam County. As a building inspector for the county, um, because I have been a sawyer for 15 or 18 years, running my own saw and running other people's saws, helping friends with their saws, when I see a saw, I am attracted to it. And when I talk to, when, I, when I'm out doing inspections as a building inspector, um, and would run across these saws, my first inclination is to forget what I was doing as an inspection and talk about that saw right there. Uh, <laughs> what do you like? What don't you like? Why'd you buy that model? Why'd you buy that brand? And so as a building inspector, I've seen dozens and dozens of these saws throughout Putnam County. So I know they're there. There is currently a cloud hanging over the head of most of these operators because they feel like the hammer of codes enforcement can fall on them because they understand that a sawmill operation, when viewed as a large scale thing, um, planning tends to look down on. So we have to have, the, the purpose of what I'm doing here today is to help put into black and white uh, the ability of people that own these small scale saws to say, look, there it says it right there that I can't be bothered for doing this stuff that I'm doing personally. Um, the specific changes that I recommend, the, the 40 horse, and we'll get to this in a little bit later, there was strict noise to the levels of a residential lawnmower. Um, when, when we talk about a 40 horsepower lawnmower, it's not uncommon to have a 40 horsepower lawnmower, lawnmower engine on a zero turn lawnmower. Like that, the, the same motor that runs these small scale mills is the same motor you would see on a lawnmower, a generator, some of these other pieces of just regular equipment that you expect to see on a job site, you expect to see um, doing stuff in, in, in residential areas uh, and different jobs. So it's the, the noise as being a concern, they brought up a graphic on OSHA this and OSHA that, and it said sawmills. And, and that, that statement right there was exactly the, the, the difference of opinion I have between planning the opinion of what's going on in mine is they lump all those sawmills. It said sawmills, decibels, blah, 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 100, 150, whatever it was. That was without recognition that there are different types of sawmills. Uh, you're not going to get the same noise from a 40 horsepower saw as you would a 200 horsepower saw. So it's, it's, a, it's a failure to try to apply that OSHA standard to something that, that really shouldn't be applied to because the, when OSHA talks about sawmills, they are not talking about these small scale mills that I'm talking about today. Um, the changes that I'm proposing will not prevent the higher production rate mills from requiring an SUP. When you get, it, it, it takes a certain level to get to a commercial status where you can actually produce lumber and be viable. So when you get to that point, it's going to be over a 40 horsepower engine. It's going to be in upwards of 60 or 80 horsepower to get to a point where you can viably produce lumber. And at that point, that goes beyond the changes that I'm requesting and puts it right back into the wheelhouse of planning and codes enforcement where they can still apply a special use permit. Um, 
one of the comments staffing made was that they, they don't have the ability to, 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 to rate horsepower. It would, uh, it, would increase, it would increase their need of staffing and resources. Well, that shows that they've never been around mechanical equipment that much because every motor that I've ever come in contact with has both a nameplate and a horsepower rating attached directly to it. So at any time, a codes enforcement officer in their, the doing of their duty can walk up to a bandsaw mill, walk up to the motor and look at it, and if it doesn't have the sticker on it that actually says the horsepower on it, they can take the nameplate reading and in a one minute Google search can from the manufacturer and ID plate on the side of the motor determine exactly the horsepower in that motor. So it's not, it does not, it does not increase the need for staffing, does not increase the need for training. It is a very simple task that anybody with any mechanical application has, has been subjected to. Uh, let's see, let's define a sawmill. So section 45, 11, 44, it's in the code section of the land development code and it talks about uh, it's their citations code where it defines all the, basically all the terms that we're using in here. It defines a sawmill. Sawmill means a facility for cutting, planing, shredding, or otherwise processing raw logs into lumber, mulch, or other unfinished wood products. This shall not be deemed to include cutting, sanding, otherwise working wood. Yeah, that's finished stuff there on, on the bottom, furniture, cabinets, whatever. But looking at that first section, sawmill means a facility for cutting, planing, shredding, or otherwise processing raw logs into lumber. So as a codes professional, if I walked onto a job and they had a machine that was taking logs from over here and spitting out lumber over there, it's going to be defined as a sawmill. That, there's, that, that is the word for word definition in the first line that the land development code currently uses to define sawmills. Let's talk about some deficiencies in the land development code. The land development code does not provide for different classes of sawmills. All are lumped in one category. Pretty much the same level of scrutiny is applied regardless of extent of use. Land development code paints sawmills with a wide brush, which is most people's first inclination. You start talking about sawmills, they don't want to say, well, there's this kind of sawmill and that kind of sawmill and this kind of sawmill. They just say sawmill. Sawmill is going to cut timber into lumber and they're gigantic, they make a lot of noise, they make a lot of dust, they're, they're a nuisance in the neighborhood. That is not necessarily the, uh, the case. Sawmill only appears in commercial ag-related category, use category. Um, if you search through the whole land development code, the only two places you're gonna find the, the word sawmill, the only two places in the whole land development code is in the use category, ag, uh, commercial ag related, and you're gonna find it in the citation section where they actually define it. That is the only two places in the whole land development code where the word sawmill appears. Everything beyond commercial ag related use category requires the interpretation of what's gonna be used there. And in, in planning's presentation before me, they said, they. They said that sawmills fall into a heavy industrial case without needing SUP. Like if you stick a sawmill in industrial, heavy industrial, there's, there's no problem with the use. It's completely conforming to the use. Well, that is for a full-on commercial sawmill. That is not for a personal hobby mill. So if you can, if you can, if you can interpret the extreme case to be the most restrictive in the heavy industrial and put it on that end, then it makes sense that the very smallest end of that can go the other direction. It can fall into an ag general use category. It it's, doesn't have as any more noise than a lawn, lawnmower. It's, uh, most of these things are portable on a trailer. Um, so they are really just a piece of equipment, no more than any other uh, farm related equipment that you would expect. Planning refuses to interpret small scale personal mills as ag general use. That's one of the things that I've, I've, I've worked the, the, oh, excuse me, the uh, special use permit for the bigger mill that came through a while back. I, I happened to be on the other side of that and me and Gabriel have had some spirited conversation <laughs> over what is and what isn't allowed. And one of the things that planning just doesn't, is unwilling to do is view a small scale saw as a, as a tool that is not significant enough to uh, 
or is, or is more significant uh, than should be allowed to just be used, period. Um, and although a lot of the current argument or the, the current discussion that Gabriel had here a little bit ago is a hobby mill for your own personal use on your house or on your property carrying your own logs is allowed by right, there's nowhere, there's nowhere in the land development code that we can, that me as a customer on this side of the counter that wants to do that can go and say, look, I can use this by right. It all requires an interpretation and their opinions of the interpretation of the land development code. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to do here is to, to make it to where we can say that is specifically allowed. So, uh, in my opinion, planning's got a complete misunderstanding of the different classes of sawmills, production levels, and the uses that are going on. And, and, and I don't mean that they don't understand the difference between a, a low-level commercial mill and a full-on industrial taking up two acres and having tra I, I'm not saying that they don't understand between um, that there are different grades of mills. I'm just saying that they, their understanding does not allow them to interpret enough of the land development code to make distinctions to e ease up on some of these people that are using these sawmills. Uh, let's see, land development codes and sawmills. So currently, and this is, came up in the, in the previous uh, presentation, this is the section where it talks about sawmills. Anybody that has been around a sawmill, knows anything about a sawmill, knows that Probably 95 or 98 percent of the time, the wood is not coming from the same site that the sawmill is on. It just doesn't happen. That that verbiage was introduced in 02 or 06, whenever the land development code got updated from the 1998 ordinance. So when in 88, that line right there just said sawmill. It didn't have the restriction of of the of the wood coming from the on site. And we can only assume that they put that in there to restrict the size of the sawmill. But it, in, from a practicality standpoint, that, it doesn't make any sense. And nobody that you know that runs a sawmill is going to say, yeah, I grow the trees right here next to where my sawmill is. It just, it just doesn't happen. <clears throat> okay, so, and, and this was something that Gabriel touched on. Currently, there, are, there, there is no way for me to call up here to the planning and say, I'm gonna, I want to install a sawmill where I, off, I, I source trees from off-site. What do I need to do? Aside from being industrial, there's, there, there's no place they can go to the land development code and define that. So it's going to require some sort of interpretation. The, the proposed changes attempt to correct the vagueness of that interpretation. They, they, these changes, I intend to make it to where it takes it out, they, it, it, it doesn't put the responsibility on planning. It takes that out of their hands and he can, it's, it's as simple as saying, well, is it bigger than 40 horsepower or is it less than 40 horsepower? If it's bigger than 40 horsepower, then we're gonna require you to get an SUP. We're gonna evaluate everything that you've got going on. We're gonna consider it commercial and we're gonna proceed from there. That is, that is exactly how that determination can go. This is the simplest, easiest determination. So. When it comes in and it's less than 40 horsepower, then, we, then that is simple. That's considered a personal use mill. And in, in the realm of personal use, exactly like you were talking about having a hobby and sometimes you make money from hobby, it's not uncommon for a personal use mill to offset some of their, their running expenses by selling a portion of what they're making there. But the, these mills are small enough that they do not make enough pr product to be considered a full-on commercial. You can't make a living with a, with a mill under 40 horsepower. Um, and I think that is important. By recognizing that there's differences in mechanical capabilities of different mills, you should be obvious that sawmills should not be treated the same and small scale mills are no more than standard farm equipment. No more than standard farm equipment is exactly what they are. No louder than them. They do no, they, they, they process less material than what you would expect a commercial mill. They just are not, they are not large enough equipment to have the heavy hand of the government regulating them. It's just another piece of equipment. Building contractors use portable mills to create um, mantles. They create rough cut wood. I've, I have cut, uh, for instance, I had a job out on uh, West River Road one time. It was old. It was a house built in the early 1900s, and the stair treads were all odd dimension rough cut wood. And so when the, when the homeowner asked me to do work on it, and I was like, well, where am I going to get this lumber? I was able to go to the sawmill, cut trees to the exact dimension of the old stuff, and so I am using that as a builder's tool, not as a, not as a lumber production. I'm trying to be Home Depot number two. 
and I use that as a builder's tool, no different than a skill saw or table saw, to create the products that I need for those jobs. So it's, it's, it's a piece of equipment that does not need to be demonized as this large scale, um, large scale commercial production uh, equipment. Difference in sawmills, commercial sawmills. Commercial and industrial grade sawmills typically are completely hydraulic. They're almost every function that's on them is hydraulic. They have uh, roller tables, they have conveyor belts, they have all kind of ancillary equipment, not just the saw, but they have a lot of additional equipment to both handle the timber coming on site, whether it be unloading or transportation from where the, the uh, timber is unloaded to the saw, and then movement and usage of the lumber downstream, loading trucks, um, there, there is, there in a industrial, a commercial and industrial setting of a sawmill, there is a lot of additional equipment involved. Uh, production rates are high, power requirements are very often, in, for just a saw head, are in excess of 100 horsepower. Timber requirements are high, meaning they're bringing in lots of truckloads of timber and uh, shipping out a lot of truckloads of lumber. So you, it, in a, com a large commercial or industrial level mill, you would expect to see a lot of that truck traffic. Uh, hours of operation in industrial mill, you can't, you, can't, you can't afford to keep an industrial mill open with all the stuff and all the employees without working it 40 hours a week. So it's, you're gonna see 40 hours a week operation and oftentimes more than that. Um, and that's in an industrial level mill. Mid-level mills, mid-level mills operate on a commercial level but are typically not used 40 hours a week. I have seen some of these um, the special use permit that Gabriel and I worked on um, was in fact one of these. The mill didn't operate. It may have operated a day or two a week, oftentimes set idle for a month or more at the time, but it had the capability to produce enough lumber from, from timber to be commercially viable, to, to make it, to, you could make a full-time job out of that mill. Um, those mills typically operate between 50 and 80 horsepower. They, they can operate in excess of 80, and you, you can get by slightly less than 50, but, but typically you're gonna see those mid-level mills operating between 50 and 80 horsepower. They have very little manual input, just like the commercial mills that are basically all hydraulics. These mid-level mills, most of them are, are functions, the functions on them are all hydraulic. They raise and lower the head, they drive the head through the wood, they, they, they have rollers and loaders and they're, all, they're, they're basically all hydraulic and it takes, all it takes is button and lever inputs to process this, this, these logs. The production rates capability are high enough to require stockpiling of timber and truck traffic may be required. So depending on the hours of operation and how much those mid-level mills are being used, you could have an adverse traffic problem there. You could have a few too many trucks going. You could have, they brought in a little too much lumber, too much timber, or too much timber rather, and have to stockpile it here, and that becomes an eyesore. The truck traffic's a nuisance to it. So those are the tight mills that absolutely need to be addressed with the SUP. Those are the things that, without a doubt, should be become before Gabriel and then go into the Zoning Board of Adjustment to say, what are the conditions of the property? What are, what are the, you know, the, the size of the motor, which is gonna determine the production rate? How, how is this thing set up? And what, what are we doing here? What are the problems? Those things can be evaluated at the special use permit level and should be. That's not what we're talking about. So the, what I'm talking about today is right here, small scale mills. Power requirements are low, less than 40 horsepower. So we're talking about lawnmower engine on a, on a bandsaw blade. Loading and, loading, loading and unloading is often done manually. Um, most of the small scale mills that I've been involved with don't have automatic loaders where they unload timber. What happens is, Somebody will show up with a small dump trailer with four or five logs in it, or they'll pull up with an old car trailer that they were able to d drag two or three logs up on, and then they have to horse them off the trailer. It's not a high production uh, operation. The saw head operation is sometimes manually, meaning whereas in some of the other bigger operations, you hit a button and the saw head goes up and down automatically to where it goes, most of these small scale mills actually has a crank, a hand crank. You crank that thing, and it raises the head or lowers the head, and then um, even 
even the drive through the wood where you would hit a button on a, on a full-scale mill and it would drive that head through the wood to saw it, many of these mills, you, you stand next to it and crank the crank and it drives the head through the wood. It's a very labor-intensive process. Most are done as a hobby to build sheds and barns and porches and wood fence, whatever, but typically it's not high enough production rate where they're, they can afford to sell any of the wood. Uh, production rates are extremely low, often 20 to 30 minutes to process one log. Now, when you compare that to a commercial operation that automatically loads the log, turns it where it needs to be, starts cutting, makes the camp, and slices that log up in sometimes as little as a minute and a half, when you start comparing a minute and a half production rate to a half hour production rate, you'll see that you cannot make money and you cannot produce enough wood with these small scale mills for it to be commercially viable. And I know this because I have done this very same thing. I have done, I have processed these logs and it seems like an eternity. And I have people come and say, can I buy lumber from you? And I'm saying, absolutely not. I'd have to sell it at 10 times the price Home Depot to even break even because the, the cost in manpower is just ridiculously high for what you're getting. Um, most most small scales don't typically tim uh, stockpile timber and uh, do not receive tractor trailer loads of of timber so they're not uh, because of the limited production rate you're not seeing semi trucks come in there and offload a, a a whole load of timber there because because of the production rate being so low if you offloaded a whole timber a whole uh, tractor trailer you would be there for weeks processing that one trailer load of thing. And that's not that's not how these mills operate. These guys are buying these mills and um, bringing in a log or two. Most of the time, you know, the tree surgeons often will cut pine trees out of uh, yards that are nuisances and to prevent having to pay to dump them at the landfill where they get charged out the ears, they will say, if they know somebody with sawmill, they'll say, hey, you want these two logs I just cut out of Miss So-and-So's front yard? And it'll be like, well, yeah, so there's some free wood we can cut up and make something out of. And so we're getting a, a decent byproduct from something that is not what would be a timber harvesting harvesting uh, process there. The timber, typically, uh, this is what I just explained, it's typically a product of other work. It's not a forestry-based timber harvest program that this, that, these, uh, that this raw material is coming from. Small scale mills are too small to have any noticeable truck traffic. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna notice truck traffic with these mills because the production rate is so low. Okay, so when we think about an industrial sawmill, here's what we got. This is this is the mulch plant up on Highway 17, right before you get to the county line there, just north of Boswick. It is what you would consider an industrial level sawmill. It produces mulch, cuts whatever they do up there. They're operating on an SUP, and they're operating on ag property. It's not industrial property. It's ag property with a uh, special use permit. Ooh, oh, I went, how do I back up? Let me go back one time right there. Here's another industrial sawmill. This is Turner Sawmill over on Turner Road in uh, East Palaka. Been operating for a long time. It operates on an ag piece of property and it is only five acres, but it is truly an industrial high capability, high production rate sawmill. They have, in addition to the saw, they have multiple conveyor belts. They have all kinds, exactly what I described a few minutes ago, all kinds of ancillary equipment for moving timber and, and processing lumber. This is not an industrial sawmill. This is a, I don't know, Timber King B2000, got less than a 40 horsepower. I mean, you can see the nice little stack of lumber there, but that's just a portable mill uh, that you're seeing there that does not have a high enough production capability to, uh, there's another one, the saw head's covered up with a tarp there, but you can see the small scale uh, nature of that mill. Here's another one. That is not an industrial sawmill. That right there is, uh, is a wood miser, uh, LT15 or something. Um, 
to process enough lumber on that to make money <laughs> is impossible. I mean, it's, everything's man. You can see right there that, the, you know, maybe they've got a little tractor there that they pull up there and set on that mill so that they can cut stuff up. But predominantly, this is, this is, this is made for making tables and making hobby stuff and, yeah, maybe cut a little bit of lumber for the barn. But this is, it does not have the production capability to need to be required with the SUP. There you go. See how, see how small that is? I mean, you see the engine size there. It's probably 19 or 20 horse engine. Nothing, nothing extravagant. Same thing you would see on a, on a lawnmower. Here's a small scale mill right here. Um, again, comp completely manual driven, manual up and down, manual through the wood, no hydraulics. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a zero turn lawnmower in the picture right there just for scale. You want to see what, what size engines on that mill and then look right there next to it. There is a lawnmower that clearly demonstrates the, what size that is. And here's my favorite one. <laughs> so in the grand scheme of things, when we fall back to the definition of what a sawmill is, that's a sawmill. That's what they call an Alaskan sawmill. That's two chainsaws with a bar and a guide right there. And you can see that it's making, it's making unfinished slabs right there. That's a, a, tree, a local tree surgeon who ends up with a lot of overflow from, from jobs he does, and he's converting that into usable stuff. It's not finished wood, though. And so, in the, you know, it, this is an extreme case, and by, by no means do I ever think anybody with any common sense would regulate that as a sawmill, but that's kind of the point of the day is to demonstrate the vagueness of what we got going on in the Land Development Code. So uh, I tried to get him to send a picture without him in it, but he wouldn't do it. He just I think he wants to be famous. All right, so these types of mills are not the problem. That's what, that's, what, uh, that's what we need to take out of today. All mills pictured are in Putnam County. Uh, all mills that I took a picture there are, are less than 10 acres. All are powered by less than 40 horse, with the exception of the two industrial things that I showed first. Uh, all use wood from off-site. I think that's key because all these, all these, all these mills, and, and you, you could tell from the pictures in those mills around them that there's not a lot of production going on. There's not... It's not beat down and uh, you know covered with sawdust and covered with traffic. That, these these mills are used infrequently. Um, most are in ag zoning. I will say that one of them was in a residential area, but has never had a problem from any of the neighbors around, and it's not used often enough to to, to warrant them calling in. So um, it it just it hasn't been an issue. But most, with the exception of one, all the rest of them were in ag zone property, and that's the things that we're addressing today. Um, only one sawmill related codes case has been made in the last two years. The complaint was for a mill with a horsepower greater than 40 and was on a piece of property less than five acres. So, um, the, the, the only mill, and I, I'm going to say that again, the only mill that's had a codes case on it in the foreseeable past that anybody in codes could, could remember had a, had a motor larger than what we're talking about today. And was on a small enough piece, and it backed up to residential. It backed up to about six or eight residential uh, parcels that had houses on them, and with the exception of one, one person, I think uh, the rest of them had just had it there. And that, that mill had been in operation for like 16, 17, 18 years. Uh, here's the key to that one. That mill was granted a special use permit. So we've got a, a mill there that is uh, now granted. There were some. There were some. There were some uh, stipulations that he had to adhere to to get that special use permit and build a enclosure around the saw so he could deaden some of the sound. I mean, there's, there's a handful of things that got addressed there, but again, we have a over 40 horsepower mill on less than five acres that got a special use permit. So they saw it, the, the, the zoning board adjustment saw it in their uh, wisdom to say that that was okay. So if, if in my opinion, if that's okay and we can address all that, then these mills that I'm talking about, which aren't even half the, half of what was going on there, then, um, uh, that, that should just kind of demonstrate the small scale of what we're trying to do here. The, the fact that we so many of these mills are in use and no complaints have generated demonstrates exactly why we don't need to over-regulate these small scale mills. Um, permitted use. Here's the, here's uh, here is the use category ag general, which is I think the exact interpretation of what we need to be looking at when we say small scale mills. Uh, agriculture for the 
use related to production, keeping or maintenance, whether for sale or personal use of plants and animals for food, forage, fiber, which is trees or ornamental purposes. Agriculture characterized by predominantly outdoor activities covering very small portion of land, include aquaculture, blah, 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 blah. But what I want when you get back there is it's for the production and keeping for sale or personal use plants and for fiber. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're making, we're making plants in the lumber or other uh, rough cut products. Uh, so in, a, in ag general, it's understood that equipment will be used, trucks, tractors, generators. I mean, any, any farm operation has equipment that to the layman that's never been around equipment seems like big, terrible equipment and loud and noisy, but to people that are actually working on a farm, working with it every day, it's just, it's nothing different than a hammer. They are, they are using equipment and the, 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 the small scale sawmills fall into exactly that category. Um, one of the things they were talking about earlier was a uh, 15 acre uh, parcel size for the commercial stuff, but Ag General doesn't restrict parcel size in any function, uh, small scale mills, don't require that much space. Um, obviously, they're, uh, if they were in a residential area, that would generate a codes case and then that could be evaluated. But for the, for the most, I think it's a disservice to try to put a uh, property or parcel size limitation on such a small scale tool. Um, small scale mills are no allowed in any other equipment typically in an agricultural process. Trees are often salvaged from tree work land clearing operations, we touched on that. Trees are not delivered in large loads, we touched on that. All these uses are consistent with Ag General. Use of mills are rarely every day, more often than not, they're used very infrequently. They are not, you know, a lot of these mills, guys use them for stress relief. They'll, they'll get a couple of logs and they'll cut them up and it's, that, that, is, that is the way they get away from their work week very often. Um, uh, they use them for small projects, but, but again, the, the, the production capacity is so low, it's not, it's not commercially viable. Uh, production rates limited because of small size in the mills, limited motor size, manual functions regardless of op uh, required for operation, often not being more processed two or three logs an hour. We touched on production rate. This, I can't emphasize enough that these mills cannot produce enough to be commercially viable. Okay, so now we're going to discuss the proposed change as, as I had it. And I tried to make this, uh, well, this, this one, this is uh, the same one they had. So this is under the... Um, the definition of agriculture in the ag district and uh, uses allowed in the ag district. And um, this makes the function where we're not trying to force a SUP onto personal use mills. Uh, number six, saw mills were for personal use where the sawmill power by the motor does not exceed 40 horsepower. That's change number one. And I have these backwards just because I felt like that, that agricultural, that uh, definition in the agricultural district uh, really kind of supersedes. Uh, uh, the other one, but in the second one, which was probably first in y'all's list, um, I try. I tried to um, I actually e email Gabriel and, and tried to add a little verbiage in there, but he had already advertised um, their uh, their opinions of what was going on. So this is slightly different than what you guys see. And the, the, the change was sawmill where the sawmill is powered by a motor not exceed 40 horsepower or has a special use permit. Meaning let's get to the point where we're not concerned about things that are less than 40 horsepower. Like let's not be concerned about these small tools. Let's focus, let's, let's let our, our sawmill focus be on the stuff that actually can be commercial. Um, so conclude, let's just, let, we'll wrap it up. Uh, mills under 40 have horsepower, limited production capabilities, can't process enough to be uh, commercially viable and are consistent with ag general expectations. Um, most are used infrequently. The 40 horsepower limit uh, allows existing residents to contend the use of their mill in limiting, limited com limiting commercial operations. It also gives um, uh, planning a easily definable place because if I come in and say, or if Codes comes in and say they got a commercial sawmill going on out there, it, currently it is up to the feelings and interpretation of planning to determine whether it's commercial or for personal use. That kind of does a disservice to somebody because we can have a two day long conversation on what is personal use and what is commercial because I can't seem to find in the land of development code where it's clearly defined. 
Because just like you said a little while ago, it's okay for a hobby to make a little money. And so by defining the commercial use at the horsepower change makes it makes a makes a easy point of delineation so that there's not a there's not a there's not a vagueness of interpretation from planning and a and a adversarial relationship between the the citizen that comes in here and says I'm not using it commercially and planning or codes that says yes you are this is how we see it so in my opinion the horsepower delineation takes all that all that argumentative gray area out of the way uh, noise is not an issue no more than mowing grass or any other expected agricultural equipment I think that's important because that has a lot to do with uh, with uh, uh, some of planning's reservations about what's going on there um, code enforcement has has not had any problems any any this, this is just readdressing what I said earlier they have not in the foreseeable past had any problems with these small-scale mills um, and again changes do not adversely affect the ability to require SUP for a truly commercial product so when it gets over 40 horsepower or there is equipment beyond and this is the other thing too is uh, planning or codes would be concerned about their ability to regulate they're always concerned about their ability to regulate ability to regulate this or that if we let you do this then we don't have the ability to regulate the ability to regulate from a codes or planning standpoint <coughs> as a building inspector one of the things I've, I've said in my entire career is no job is ever 100 percent compliant so don't argue with the inspector and that's the same thing you have with the planning because there's no way in the world that you can be 100 percent compliant now you might argue with me and get this right but there's five or six things over here that I'm going to find out that are wrong. And it's the same condition that you're going to have with any of these small-scale mills. If you guys approve what I'm suggesting is a change, what you're going to have is a condition. And, you know, the theoretical condition from the worst-case scenario of the planning is, well, what if I have 40-horsepower mill and they're running commercially and this and that? Well, the answer to that is you, you call them out on the additional equipment they're going to have because that's what they're going to need to pr be commercially viable. You're going to call them out on the noise because they're going to be making no more noise than just running the saw. You're going to call them out on the increased traffic because they can look back at this presentation in this meeting today and say that it was put to you guys that this was not uh, a large traffic event or large timber requirements. And they will be able to find an avenue to correct the problem without having to worry about whether or not the, the other hundred citizens had the ability to effectively use their stuff without an issue. So um, don't think that approval of what I'm talking about is gonna take away from the ability of codes or planning to uh, address problems as they come up. All right. That's what I've got. So <laughs> Before we go to questions to Mr. Morris, a couple things I do wanna point out. Okay. We are eminently aware that there are deficiencies in the Land Development Code. Okay. Uh, we will be addressing those going forward. In fact, there's an RFP on the street right now for a consultant to guide us through that process. Right. Number two, all that our staff can interpret is what's in the Land Development Code and the, the comprehensive plan. So they're limited in their scope of being able to approve based on what is on the books in ordinance and comprehensive right. plan, well, in ordinance form. So <laughs> I want to take reason. them off the hot seat a little bit right. because they're just doing what they're being allowed to no, do. I, 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 mean, I mean, no disrespect to that office. I'm, I, am, I am in my capacity in the town of Wallaca, I'm actually doing some of the same stuff that he does. So I'm right. on the other side of the counter. I'm not, I'm not trying to bash that department. What I am saying is that we there are a things. lot of gray areas and a lot of interpretations and, and a lot of those interpretations are, are made based on the history or, or work experience or other life experience that right. that person has been subjected to. And so coming from, there's a difference between somebody that's been in the office and somebody has been in the field and the, the views are a little bit different. And Absolutely. That's um, the other thing is I think we realize that there are different classes of sawmills. We realize and we appreciate your edifying us on the fact that 
what each one does and how each one operates and the fact that we have some in Putnam County. Uh, the one thing that, that we need to look at is we need to look at not just your operation, but operations going forward and how are they best permitted in Putnam County. Right. So that, that's part of it. Um, we have to look at things like road capacity, uh, location, because location does involve different road right. levels of, of operation. So there are a lot of things that go into this. Now, do we go back and rewrite the land development code and try to put in every possible contingency? Or do we continue to rely upon ZBOA to look at each case individually? Those are the things that we need to look at, along with how do we get Mr. Morris's operation I'm not, I'm not talking right. about my operation. I'm here for about a dozen you're different doing, people. You're doing general. I'm, okay. I, I'm, doing, I'm doing a general okay. thing. And, and, and I can say that that ZBOA special use permit is an absolute atrocious, hard thing to get through. And without, and, and I, I understand you're concerned about traffic and, and, well, and, all, and all the other things that go on. But, but if there's one thing that I can get through to you guys and, and, and pass on to you is what, what I'm talking about and what we're trying to regulate here today is of no con th those are not concerned those are absolutely not concerns because of the small scale of what of what this equipment is what what your what your vision of how the how there's going to be truck traffic and this and that is is negligible but yet we still need to recognize that there are multiple levels and multiple categories of sawmills and do we mm -hmm. exempt one from an SUP and not exempt another do we blanketly say that anybody can put up a 40 horsepower sawmill on whatever size property they want and have a tree surgeon come in with their big equipment and drop trees off to be milled. Well, that, that, that's already allowed. That, that is already allowed by what Gabriel no. just said. I'm talking about bringing trees in from offsite. This is the offsite that I'm talking yeah. about, because that's offsite. Yeah, no, I, I, mean, I mean, I'll follow you, but. Yeah. If you and the answer and answer your question: Should should you deregulate one and not the other? The answer, in my opinion, is yes. If it's less than forty horsepower, you should deregulate it and not care about what goes on around it because because oh. there is not the problem that you would have with the larger mills. There's not there's not right. the traffic problem. We there's not the sound that. problem. That's just. But we also know that we don't have anything addressing medium mills or large mills in the land development code. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, yes, Madam well, Chair. Okay. I'm not here to address the rest of the I land realize that. I can have one specific section that I'm working on. We, we, <laughs> we have to look at everything. So if we were to change the land development code right now and put in what I, this is my, this is me as the chairman speaking, and put in the provisions you're asking for, those provisions would also affect medium-sized mills and large mills. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, they would. I disagree because there's no stipulation on the different classes of mills. So I think that's one of the things we've got to look at in, in the land development code. Uh, perhaps we can address something in the LDC at this point that regulates only sawmills 40 horsepower or less and put that in and then leave the bigger ones and hope nothing comes up between now and then until we get to the LDC. We have. And they're mostly industrial. The large ones are industrial, heavy industrial. And, and, and one of the changes, and that was the, that was the change that I said I, I added a little verbiage to, that um, that uh, didn't didn't make it on the original. Let me let me back that slide up, um, and get to that. Well, and I'll, we I'll, have I'll, to work off what has been advertised. Well, according to Gabriel, you guys have the ability to. We can change to, it. To we change can it. amend okay, it. Okay, so in the. Um, Oh, that was it. Let me go back forward. So, right. so that was it. So it, it, my original proposal said sawmill where sawmill right. is not powered by, to exceed 40 horsepower. Well, I added this or has a special use permit. That does what you're talking about in class, making two different classes of sawmills. So that, what that does, that says everything below 40 horsepower is considered personal use small scale sawmill. Everything over 60 is required either to be in a heavy industrial where it doesn't need a special use permit or from this, this section right here. 
it would require, if it's over 40 horsepower, it would require a special use permit. That's the language that, that I added to um, okay. the thing. I think we've got two separate sections here, and we need to, to dialogue with Mr. Morris more okay. if you'd like to. But I think we need to look at two separate sections. We need to look at what he has proposed, whether or not we approve it, amend it, amend it or not, and then approve it or not. And number two, if we don't approve what Mr. Morris has presented, we need to look at the staff recommendation and see if there are any amendments to that and whether or not we approve that at this time. But those are the things we're looking at. Let's look right now. Are there any other questions from the board to Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. DeSantis. You're not here representing a developer? No, sir. I'm not. I'm representing, I'm rep any I'm representing about... Well, everybody I know that has a personal use sawmill, and there's there's a lot of them. You're representing the a group of sawmill people. Yeah, no, I'm not an official. No, it's no. not like an official. I don't know sawmill. You're, you're here as a consortium or anything like that. I, I, I am a concerned I citizen mean. that saw a okay. need to to. Uh, you're not to getting paid. The, Just tell me no, you're not getting, not paid, getting paid to do paid. this. I am not getting paid. Matter of fact, this thing cost me <laughs> 750 bucks, which I'll never recoup. <laughs> Sure you will. You <laughs> operate that sawmill and get oh, that money golly. back. Yeah, well, um, y'all let me get to using it. I'll be okay, right. so you're representing a group of people like you mm -hmm. who have personal sawmills, small sawmills, small sawmills. Small, small, that want to be able to operate them free of an SUP. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to ask you a hard question. How many of you are currently operating those mills? How many, how many of those mills are being operated? Right. Well, you are. All of them. All of, all so of all of you are operating them right now without a SUP and in codes violation. That's correct. That's okay. absolutely correct. That's that was that was the importance that I need. That's the distinction. Now, according to planning, there you know they'll say, well, a personal use mill can be uh, is is allowed by right, but it, it requires an interpretation. It's not specifically in the code. So exactly, and we recognize that code. So don't point the finger at Gabriel. No, 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 no. When it's I say Gabriel, guy. I mean that department. I mean, if if you knew how many conversations Gabriel and I have had, I can we, only we imagine. Are, we are one step from being in a okay. relationship. Other, <laughs> I think his wife would object. Other questions of Mr. Morris. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I don't understand why we're even here discussing this if we've got numerous of these around and there's never been a complaint on one. Well, it's like, it's like this. If you got a section of the road where everybody runs 80 but the speed limit's 60, you would feel better if they changed the speed limit sign to say 80. Have and that's you, that's the cloud that's hanging over all these. Like, matter of fact, I, none of them wanted, like, I was going to show, one of the things I wanted to show, I showed the aerial photos from from the mulch plant and from uh, Turner Sawmill over there. And I wanted to show the aerial photos of some of these to show what a small impact, like you couldn't even tell the mill was there. Like there's no truck traffic there. There was no, and everybody that I talked to said, absolutely not. Do not put my aerial photo in there because they, they assume, and this is part of that cloud that I'm talking about. They assume that codes is in here with a notepad going, oh, well, that's, that, that's out at such and such and such a street. We're, we're not the revenuers and you're not operating a liquor still. That's right. That's right. Well, that, but, but, but my point is from, from this side of the counter, from, from the, from the citizen side of the counter. And when they view an overbearing government, the thing that they want to do is be able to point to a line of code that says I'm okay. And currently, we do not have that. I can, I can respect that, but you also need to have a code or have means if, let's say, somebody does bring a, a 40 horsepower right. uh, size of a lawnmower. I mean, you know, we, we get people in here all the time saying things of crickets, and we know right. they're loud as hell. Right. No, I understand so that. We just go by, all we can go by is what you're saying. Right. Well, I expect you guys have some sort of knowledge of of motors or had done well, a little research, well, but at the same time, do, you guys have a lawnmower running. It's a whole different deal trying to cut grass versus cutting a log. So right. No, I, I agree with that. The, it's not the motor running. It's what it, what the noise makes from the blade. It's not, has nothing right. to do with the motor. That's right? part That's of it. But, yeah. look at it. Yeah. Yeah. but anyway, I think in my opinion is the reason we have rules is, is if there's a complaint, and somebody comes in and goes, because you're making too much noise with yours and right. you're really disturbing your neighbors. Right. There should be something in that, that our government has to come and say, well, look, no, you can't do this. And there is. There is. Okay, well, that, that's good. But, but I don't, 
to change, I don't see a reason to change a code if there's no complaint. Is what well, I think. Is, are people and, going out and knocking on, oh, you have a sawmill, you got to stop it? I mean, if there's no complaint. Well, so it's like this. So I got involved with a special use permit on a, on a mill that was, that was larger than this. It was larger than 40 horsepower. And that complaint was generated from a neighbor. And so the, 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 the general consensus among, amongst the guys out there is all it takes is one complaint from a neighbor, and we have to go through that special use permit permitting process, which is atrocious. Like you guys understand what's going on here, and you guys are in tune with this. But coming from coming from a citizen that has no involvement, I mean, you know how people bad mouth the building and planning and zoning for them requiring permitting over there. It's breeze for me because I do it every day. I go in, I get a permit, I know what information to bring in. Most people do not have that. Most people, if you sent them the same nasty letter from codes that says you're in violation, they lose their mind, they lose sleep. This is a, not a, this is a very emotional piece this. to that. But and you're also infringing on somebody's, uh, the reason the complaint came out, right. they're, not, they're just not trying to get, get well, that's <laughs> yeah, that's you know, that's cases, true in most. That's true in some cases. I, I mean, I agree with that. But in ninety-nine percent of the cases, they have a legitimate complaint because the noise. Yes. Is, you know, people move out to the country, especially ag, to get away from all the noise. Right. They don't right. Right. All the noise, and then somebody brings a sawmill by, and I, I, I just don't see any reason in changing the code. And the you other, know, you, you've made a very good argument. I mean, okay. you really have, and and you've convinced me that. You know, bringing in uh, logs from off site of a guy that is going out and cutting trees, and I, I would much rather see that wood go to use than right. just be thrown yep. away or burned or gone to the landfill. There's a lot of good in, in what you guys are doing, and I, I think is I, I hope they just leave you alone unless you're causing a problem for your neighbor. Right. And I, I just think you got to have rules to well, be able to I, help the neighbor. That, in that res in response to that, I, pr I appreciate that concern. Um, but those those things can be answered via different channels. If the noise is a problem, let's say I, let's say I buy a forty horse sawmill, and I set it that's the property line, and I set it up right here, and I'm I'm causing noise to the neighbor. That is that is a noise complaint that can be re regard that can be regarded whether it's a sawmill, a lawnmower, a dump truck, that, that there, there are multiple avenues to address the problem without focusing on it, it being a sawmill. There, there, any, any complaint you can think of right now can be addressed through a different avenue other than it's a sawmill, we should regulate it. Sound, uh, uh, debris, like if the, like the sawmill is kicking debris across the plane. Huh? Yeah. No, I, where there's everybody's coming down here complaining about sawmills, and right. they're not knocking on everybody's door and saying, "You got a sawmill, you got to get rid of it." Well, let, let me let me let's let's say, let's, let's, say, let's not have this debate too much. I think I, we need I to stop. Can, 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 can I make one more statement? One more there. statement, and then we're going to move on to Mr. Hamner. So my, my, my final statement in that would be. The citizens of Putnam County are self-sufficient people, and yes, they move to ag to be away from stuff. Um, the, the things that we do, uh, you know, that, that, that are not a problem now, we're experiencing a dramatic increase in people from other areas. That, as a builder, I see it. I see it. We're selling houses to people from out of state. We're selling houses from people that are, that are coming from other places that don't necessarily operate like we do in Putnam County. And so part of the, the, the desire to get this change is to make it to where we can continue to use without the fear of, of reprisal um, into the future. Because if, I have, if I'm on a piece of zoned ag and I'm running my sawmill and I don't have the protection of something in the code that specifically says I can, and I have a neighbor move and get mad and call in and say sawmill this and sawmill that, and for the sake of it just being a sawmill, not because it's noisy, not because it's not because there's we, any other we complaint get that. other than it's a sawmill calls okay. in, then I have that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna head. stop you. We we get all of that. Okay. One okay. thing I'm gonna say is we can't make assumptions and generalizations that everybody in Putnam County feels the way you do. The other thing I'm gonna say, and I don't want to rebuttal on this, is special use permits are there also to protect the owner. They're also there to protect the operator because if there were a challenge, you can show that special use permit and say, I am legally operating. So there are two sides to that. Now, Mr. Hafner, you've been waiting patiently. Yes, I have. 
my big concern about the whole thing is that I don't think the 40 horse out, horsepower solves the issue. I think the issue is, the, from another perspective, the issue is the production level and the ancillary equipment that goes along with that sawmill. Uh, there's a lot of different, I'd love to have one of these sawmills to play out on my property with. I don't, don't deny that. But if I were going to go out there and use something less than 40 horsepower, and I figured to myself that, okay, I can run this thing eight hours a day with just me and one other person, uh, and there's, there's nothing that limits that on using the 40 horsepower level. Well, I think there's got to be consideration of production. Production considerations bring about traffic considerations, et cetera, et cetera. That's my concern. I don't think the 40 horsepower level solves the issue. Okay, and, and my response to that would be um, that that aspect, what the, the, okay, so you just came up with a, with a rhetorical situation there where you've, you've, you've bought in additional equipment to accelerate the production level of what, what would be normally a limited mill. Yeah. So my response to that would be that, that condition is going to be policed by the neighbors. That condition, if, if you set up, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to backdoor the system with a 40 horse mill and you bought in roller tables and this and that, and you're bringing in, it's going to cause you to bring in a noticeable amount of wood. It's going to cause you to have to ship out a noticeable right. amount of, of product. And the, the effect that you're talking about of increased production would be felt by the surroundings. Now, if that were something that there were no surroundings and it would, we'd be in the same condition of the recommendation from planning, we'd be out in the middle of ag with on an arterial road and we're not subjecting any risk. Okay. But, but if, but if the condition, what you're talking about were to come into play and in a residential area or somewhere where there were going to be a concern, the citizens would police that they would call in codes. They would say, again, if you only, if the only limitation you have or the only level uh, that you are looking at is the horsepower of the motor, right? I think that leaves a lot out of the other considerations. Now, again, I don't disagree with what you're saying in a lot of cases because I know what it would be like, having been a farmer a good bit of my life with some acreage, to be able to go out when I needed to make some good fence posts or some fencing materials or things like that, to be able to crank that thing up and do whatever I wanted to do with it. I'd love to be able to do that. I, I think what we're more concerned with are those that would abuse that privilege. And there are always those that will abuse a privilege. Uh, I, okay. I follow that, but I think okay. it's unfair to okay. the citizens of Putnam debating. County to legislate to the most extreme cases. Okay, we're not debating. No, Are there not, any not other not. questions of Mr. Morris? Okay, we're going to bring it back to the board. Thank you very much. We, you, we've learned a lot from your presentation, okay, and we really do appreciate that. Okay, the first question that needs to be before the board at this time is, do we accept the changes to the Land Development Code that have been proposed by Mr. Morris, or do we reject those as been recommended by staff? And, and we need to discuss this among the board. Mr. DeSantis. Everything that I've heard so far from the board makes common sense in my opinion. We've had sawmills operating in this county for years. Now, I've been up here 26 years. I buy lumber sometimes from my local sawmill. Unfortunately, that man passed away. But I've seen no problems with the sawmills existing in this county. Yeah, right. And this planning board, per, per se, anytime there has been a problem, we look at it, we look at the problem individually, honestly, and if a change needs to be made, it will be made at that point. But right now, I see no reason at all to take up any of these changes because I haven't heard the first complaint about a sawmill in this county. And there's a lot more we could learn if we just take the time. We spent a year and a half, two years going over our whole code and our this comp plan, never not the came code up yet. a little over two years yeah but it never came up so we have time to go through this if we really feel that there's a need to change our existing rules and regulations on sawmills and i think it's adequate so i don't think anything we should do right now to, to make a vote either way. I see no reason to make a change of any kind at this time. We have to either approve or deny this and case. I would say deny because that's where I'm going. Um, just remember, the Land Development Code is coming, and we will be reviewing the Land Development Code, and at that time, we're going to be charged with looking at all those loopholes that you can drive a truck through, and we're going to be charged with looking at ways that we can make this more reasonable for the citizens of Putnam County. I like that 
board. So, uh, yes, there's always going to be the long arm of government, but we can mitigate the problems by looking at things up front rather than hindsight. So foresight has got to be the thing we look at. So, Mr. Schwing. Gabriel, I have, I'm a little confused. I thought I asked you earlier when you was on this side that I'll be the guinea pig. I'll, I'll be the homeowner. And I could have this, one of those pictures that we just saw, the small ones, mm -hmm. in my house, and I don't need a special use permit. Did you not tell me that? But you can't bring You would be able to use a saw for personal use at your house. Right, right. Um, and it would not require a special use permit. But could you bring off-site timber in for that use? We, we wouldn't even, the, the planning division and the code enforcement division wouldn't even look at that. Um, it wouldn't really matter whether the, you brought it from off-site. I mean, most people, a lot of people who bring, um, who have hobby saws, just buy them at the store so, or source them from a friend, so, um, or source the wood from a friend. So. I would say a, a, a considerable amount of them don't uh, source them from on-site. Um, and so the, the position of planning on that is that to get into, into specifications of hobby saws would be more detrimental to the homeowner than what we have now. Um, the codes are, are moving towards not specifying every last use because then it binds the hands of the right. planning division um, and moving towards more of a, like uh, regulating noise and dimensions and things like that. Um, well, if, if what we have now, maybe, maybe I'm not understanding what Mr. Morris wants to do, but if we can do what I just said, I mean, I can, I can have it and use it my own self and Jeb can bring me some timber that he cut some trees down and I can play with it and do what I want. And I don't need a special use permit. So the only thing that this thing here is wanting to do is to make a 40 horsepower motor, the guideline for that small thing. And eliminating not bringing in wood from offsite. Well, we, he just said we can bring the wood from off site. Well, the code we would be striking, the proposal is to strike where wood is from trees grown on the site of the mill. So that would allow off site wood to be brought in under the proposal. The proposal also adds the 40, 40 horsepower. Well, I like the 40 horsepower because that, the pictures help me. I mean, a sawmill to me is one of those big things, not the little toy thing. Even though that toy thing may be larger than my little cordless saw or, you know, what I've got, uh, I think the 40 horsepower, that size puts enough restrictions on what really can be there. You can't have a 40 horsepower run the thing like out at the county line. I mean, I'm sure no. that horsepower out there is way in excess of that. Well, and that's that's a commercial yes, operation. A commercial. And my, uh, my other thing was the, the commercial aspect of it. As long as there's no employees, I don't I don't really want in my backyard. I don't want to I want to don't want to go hire Joe Smith to come work at my place for 40 hours a week on my little hobby, the hobby thing that you're calling it, the little sawmill, as long as there's no employees, I'm fine with that. As far as selling stuff, I know Tootin sells stuff all the time, and I have no problem with that. Uh, I well, think I think commercial comes in when there is a, an exchange of, of money for product. That's pretty much the definition of commercial. So, and with that, you can assume, which is never a good thing to do, 
that there would have to be additional employees that would be working to help produce that product that he could sell and make money off of. Well, no, if, yeah, one, yeah. if I wanted to go make a Cypress table and he's got a Cypress and he cuts, he cuts me in a slab mm -hmm. and I, you know, I give him $20 for it or $50 for it, that's, yep. that's not, in my mind, commercial. Okay. No, no it, it's, it's small scale stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't really see, does, does staff have a problem as long as there's no employees and as long as we keep it, I, I like the 40 horsepower thing. That gives me something okay. to go by. All we've got on the table, though, doesn't have anything to do with employees. We have the proposed ordinance as presented by the applicant. And then we have a recommendation from staff to deny that. And then we have a proposed ordinance coming from staff as a substitution. Those are the things that we can work on. We can, we can amend if we want to but we need to have a motion on the floor before we do that. Let's get everybody's comment. Yeah. Chair. Um, kind of going along with what Joel was talking about earlier, is there really an immediate need for this? If we've got all these sawmills out here now, uh, and I don't know, we may ask Dustin to comment on it again, I don't know, but uh, it just doesn't seem to me like it's something that that's critical that it be done immediately. Uh, until we're able to come up with, with better guidelines and so forth. I'm still concerned about the, uh, again, the 40 horsepower. I do see the limitations of that, but I don't see the limitations of the production levels that would be acceptable mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So I, I just don't understand the need for this to get done right now. now I well, that's why, that's why I, well, I understand the where they're coming from though. They don't want it over the top of their head. Boy, right. believe me, I, am, I, I, for one, am one that doesn't like government intervention in anything. Uh. Right. <laughs> don't want the government. We're not the revenuers. Aaron? Um, I did appreciate your presentation, Justin, and showing us, educating us a little bit on what these things are, because I really didn't know, um, honestly. Um, I did do a little bit of Google searching just to kind of educate myself a little bit, but um, you have a, a, with what the staff is recommending, your big problem to me is that it's still going to require a special use permit and it's got to be 15 acres. Yes or no? With what staff's recommending, you'd still have to have a special use permit and it would have to be 15 acres. Is that what you're objecting to? <laughs> um, the special use permit is a, the, the special use permit for under 40 horsepower, yes, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying under to Under 40 horsepower. For under 40 horsepower. I have, that's, uh, uh, again, it would take you guys to make an amendment to get to where I put that additional, that last few words in there, but I put my glasses down. Not it to worry, says, it we says, got it. It says sawmill, where sawmill is powered by a motor not to exceed 40 horsepower, you that production right. limitation, or, this is what, this is what in addition right. to what I had on there or has a special use permit. That means everything over 40 horsepower, regardless of what you do, if you have, if you say this is my personal use mill at my house, but it's 50 horsepower, it has the production capability to go beyond just residential recreational use. Okay. We got it. You know, okay. Force you into a position yeah, where you, you have to get a special use permit. Thank you. Jo uh, wanna ask a question of Gabriel. What is staff's position on that one bullet point? Um, the proposed bullet point where he is saying under not to exceed 40 horsepower or have a special use permit. Staff's position is that that's a vague statement. Um, I'm not even exactly sure what that means. I, I know Mr. Morris just explained it, but. Um, Basically, the way I read it is it's saying that anyone can operate a sawmill on their property if it doesn't exceed 40 horsepower. But if a sawmill exceeds 40 horsepower, a special use permit would be required. That's the way I, that's the way I read it. That's the way I interpret it. Mm -hmm. See, but that does, still does not provide any kind of standards for the increase in intensity that's brought on by a sawmill that sources most of its yeah. wood from offsite. 
Well, most of your most of your wood's going to be off site. It's going to be off site. It's going to be off site. I guess back to my since I still have the floor. You have the floor. You do, that's why Ellen. I don't get to talk. That's why I want. I'll give. You, I'm going to put always, my two cents I out there. It's reasonable to put some sort of size minimum because what you have doesn't have any size minimum of the property. It could be on one acre right. in ag. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem. I mean, I think five acres would be the minimum that I would say. You know, if we agreed to would do five that. acres give you the 500 feet setback that's generally accepted for noise? Uh, I'm not exactly sure that it would, and we have some subdivisions that are re purely residential but zoned agriculture that are five acres. Right. An example is, and this it might not be a great example, but the Dreamfield subdivision, it doesn't have power to it, right. but one day it will. Um, I've seen many of these antiquated. But they probably have deed restrictions that would prevent something like that, maybe. Potentially. I, I Potentially. Actually, actually, somebody asked me about those deed restrictions and and whether they were still in force or not just recently from. Oh, they that, yeah, that's a little bit of a mess. Up. Um, <laughs> but. Um, I mean, I, I'm just trying to, you know, what he says, what he's wanting has no size minimum. So I think, you know, so a size minimum on there is a reasonable thing. 15 acres, I, you know, maybe it's. Maybe it's 10, I don't know, I'm just. Just to explain where we got the 15 acres from, we took um, municipalities like, or uh, counties like Alachua, Bradford, um, Clay, um, we may have looked at St. John's, I don't remember, but the 15 acres, all of those counties, or at least a majority of them, had a minimum of either, of between 15 and 20 acres. For some so we went with the lower. Um, many of those counties have had studies done. We've done, an analysis here, but we didn't have the resources to do a full study. Um, can, I, can I ask a question further? Does, did those counties have, you have to have a special use permit or you can do it in that? Um, yeah, it, and um, if you have I, that I wish that size. I had printed that out, but um, I know a number of them did. Um, I don't know if, a, if all of them did, but I do know that a number of them did have a special use permit uh, requirement or a special exception requirement, which is the same thing. Mm -mm. Just wait. Just be patient. <laughs> it's back up to us now. So, so I guess my point is I don't, I understand, you know, why they're, at, why Justin's asking for this. Yep. Um, and I don't have a, a problem with it with some size limitation and maybe even without the special use permit as long as you have those size that size but um, that's just me and I'm one of seven or eight or however many I think we're seven of us today <laughs> okay um, Joey yes I've been to a small scale sawmill that was under 40 horsepower in Volusia County and I believe it was on a 10 acre piece of property. And I can tell you, my buddy ordered some wood and it took a month to get it. But this gentleman got his wood because his son was cutting trees and stuff mm -hmm. and he'd go help cut trees. But they, they were using the wood and stuff and they cut the wood and you're not gonna set the world on fire on 40 <laughs> horsepower left. He had, he had about a 30 horsepower and it actually was quieter than I thought it would be. And he, he run it while we were there. And they stacked the wood by hand, and they, all they did was load it up on a car trailer with a little John Deere tractor or Kubota, whatever it was. And that was about 35 horse tractor. So it's only going to pick up so many boards at a time. So he had to probably put it on there five times and stack it up. But I understand where Mr. Morris is coming from is these new people are moving into the county, and they think they can run the county. I've been a city commissioner before in Crescent City for 20 years. <laughs> I've run into that. First thing they need new people coming to town. Well, we need a dog ordinance. We need this ordinance. We need this ordinance. And it's been the same forever, but they want to raise hell, and then it just makes all the neighbors mad. And then you got to come up here and do your case to protect what you've been doing for 20 years. It's already been there. I have no problem with 40 or less horsepower. You bring wood from other areas. You might have a helper help you stack the wood because all they did was cut the wood and you had to have two people stack it Well, the one guy that was cutting he cut and then he, his helper just stack it up on the thing and then they load it on a trailer but it wasn't that noisy and you know like you said and you don't have traffic every day you might 
load one car trailer a day if you run eight hours a day. You're not going to set the world on fire, I promise you. It's not a big commercial thing under 40 horsepower, I promise you. You're not going to set the world on fire. It takes a while. Yes, it does, but it's cool. <laughs> and, he, and he charges just enough for a little bit of labor and time, but it was just more of using the wood up for a good use than then throw it on a trash pile and burn it or put it in a landfill. Mm -hmm. You know, charge a little bit of nothing. It's like, my God, but you know, you just got to wait for it when he gets time to it's do a it. To and, it yeah. and the extra wood that he had and get the straight boards what he needs to make it work. But okay. I just worry about. Like Mr. Morris says, these people coming in from other places, especially New York. I've been there, done that. And well, you came from Maine. When I come from New York, Long Island. Three months later, I was in Crescent City, Florida, but I was up there. But I know how crazy it is up there or something. If you do something wrong, they're calling somebody, I promise you. And they come down here, and they want to bring their New York ways. Okay. We got you. Okay. We're not going to point fingers at the north. <laughs> Our brethren across the Mason Dixon line. We love you, Joey. I'm just a transplant, that's all I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Joel. Yeah, the only thing I have to, to say is I've already said a lot, but it looks like the simple solution to this thing is just take sawmill out of the ordinance altogether and not even list it. And if it becomes a problem, then it goes under the noise ordinance or too much traffic or whatever but it, it seems to me the most simplest thing is is instead of no saying any size motor it doesn't say that you can't you know the ordinance doesn't say that you can't have or that you can have a you know have a table saw it doesn't the ordinance doesn't say you can there's a lot of things ordinance doesn't cover that you have Damn so it. if you if you just take it out of the ordinance totally and make it where there's just strike the line that um, the applicant made is just striking the line and where he added something don't don't take both of those out in my opinion and just leave the sawmill out of it it's not something that you would it's not saying that you can have it it's not saying that you can't have it but if it becomes a problem then I, all of the sound you know whatever problem it's causing because I can see how a neighbor could complain because of noise and stuff like that but they can complain no matter if, if, I, if I do a lot of things on my property they can you can complain about, about anything. Yeah, yeah. But I'm then, a nuisance, and I, I, I think that might be it, the solution. Am I wrong? If you removed it, then it would just be under industrial period, right? Well, it wouldn't a saw classified at all. I mean, the a sawmill would, yes, but sawmill personal use of a saw would continue to be. Uh, allowed, right, right. but then that would take away that would then create a nonconformity for those who have received an SUP to operate sawmills, and um, staff would not recommend uh, an entirely eliminating sawmills. But as a clarification on placing something uh, a use in by right, um, we staff would not have recourse um, if there's a complaint and something is, um, to use Mr. Hafner's word, abused, uh, which is a good word. Um, we code enforcement would go out. There would be a listed use that says sawmill under 40 horsepower. It'd be very vague, and there would be no recourse for that property owner because we would have nothing to go by. The only recourse really would be a nuisance lawsuit. Let me, let me propose something here, and I want Gabriel's response from it first. If we were to do nothing right now, leave the ordinance as it is, but understand that at the time when we get to sawmills in the land development code, we have a much better understanding of what we're working with thanks to Mr. Morris's expertise, and we would know what's going on. Uh, we're looking at, we hope to get into the land development code probably around June, I would imagine. Uh, maybe earlier if we get the consultant on board. But it will be probably two and a half to three years before that land development code becomes official because we have to work through however many hundred pages of the darn thing. Then it has to go to the Board of County Commissioners then it has to go to the state, and then it has to come back to us. So it's going to be a process. It took us eight months, I think, from the time we took the 
not quite eight months, took the comp plan to the Board of County Commissioners and the time it became official, I believe that was December 26th. Um, I, 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 it may have been January 7th. But it was somewhere in there, but it took a long time, you know, six months between the time we got, we left, it left here and then came back to us. LDC is liable to take longer. So <clears throat> what is the danger? And I know this is not what you want, Mr. Morris, but what's the danger of leaving the ordinance as is? I don't believe there would be any danger. The only issue, and I'm not even sure if this is an issue, really. I mean, we, we saw that there may be a need to operate a sawmill sourcing wood from offsite, but truly we haven't received any citizen uh, commentary on not that. Not yet, Mr. Morris. I'm not talking. Uh, okay. I'm getting my thumb dry. The, um, <laughs> but I don't see, I really don't see any danger in that other, um, have to throw no danger. Down. Okay. No, no and, and right now judgment. that would only, because Mr. Morris has been the one who's raised his head and gotten <coughs> on the radar screen, he would be expected to apply for an SUP. If the, if the applicant or any of the other uh, individuals that uh, the applicant is representing is just running a personal saw, there would be no, no problem. No problem. <laughs> and we're going to leave that to interpretation and to... The app, well, the, any individual uh, in their conscience and planning and zoning should something come before codes enforcement. Correct. The, the only reason that there was a case recently was because there was a code enforcement complaint about the right. dumping of logs that was causing vibrations and they were mm -hmm. causing a considerable amount of noise to... Um, and it was investigated and there, were, there was no right. SUP, but we, we don't proactively seek these out. We, <laughs> and and I, I hate to say that we have to only be in a reactive mode, but given the size of staff, I mean, we're, we're working at a minimal staff level in a growing population, and um, given the fact that there have been relatively few complaints, um, are we in a position that we do nothing and say codes and, or say staff, you can either bring us a comprehensive sawmill uh, code amendment or have one ready when we get to that in the LDC. That's an option that the commission could vote on as well or um, uh, recommend, I should say. Okay. Well, I like that idea. I was going to suggest that, but you beat me to it. Just wait till we get to the land development code. Well, then you make the motion, Mr. Froelich. I'll make the motion that we wait to the land development code to address the sawmills. I'll second that motion. Boy, Gary, you missed that one. Madam Chair, if I may. Um, so that would then we, we deny, we have a motion to deny the I, request. I'll make that motion that we deny the request as okay, stated. we got a motion on the floor right now. Oh. But you want to combine those motions, gentlemen? I think so. Yeah. Joey yes. and, and Tom, get together. Do one of you combine those motions and we'll... I'd like to combine those motions and reject the case number CA21-005 of that application. And? I'll second. Wait a minute. And? And? And, 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 and delay the, anything until we get to our planning, next LDC. planning meeting on... Address sawmills right. when we get to it in the land, LDC. Land development, land development code. code. Okay. I shall move. Who seconds that? I'll second it. All right. We have a motion on the floor to reject the request to amend the land development code concerning sawmills and to address, you know, address the issue of sawmills comprehensively in the land development code when we get to it during the LDC revision. Yes. Is that what we have? Are you ready for a vote? I'll ask Gabriel a question. Go ahead and ask Gabriel a question. You're, you're reasonably confident that doing this really won't hurt all of those folks out there with these sawmills right now for a while, right? Um, well, I, I'll say I don't know what their operation is out there. I've never seen their operation. So if, if it's such that it would fall under the definition of a sawmill and fall under the requirement for an SUP, then if someone complained, then we would have to require them to have an SUP. But I, I've never been out to those sites um, or witnessed their operation. So if, if the people who are currently operating sawmills 
without an SUP and assuming that they're personal saws and personal sawmills continue to not generate any complaints from neighbors, there shouldn't be a problem with them. Is that correct? There should not with the only clarification that I, I want, I just want to clarify that a sawmill is a, a whole facility dedicated to this or, or an area dedicated to the processing of, uh, processing of logs to create lumber. Um, if somebody has a, a bandsaw at their house and it's just sitting there and occasionally they use it, I don't see how that would ever be classified as a sawmill operation. Okay. So, just so I know, um, the pictures he showed of the, the ones that just had like a single trailer and the saw at the end with the motor, you wouldn't classify that as a sawmill? I would not. Um, the code... It's running every day, maybe. I mean, if they, if they have several of those and they start creating um, issues with odor, noise, um, uh, dust, things like that, aesthetic issues, um, then potentially we would consider it a sawmill. Uh, but um, I don't know of a single code case that we've had on that. And um, we are, um, we always interpret the code to benefit the property owner. Um, it's required by our new property rights element and by our code. It's always been right. required by our code. So I don't, I don't see us interpreting it so narrowly. Um, and I don't think that anybody could reasonably interpret it. So even if I were to be gone and anybody else interpreted it, mm -hmm. I don't think that inter an interpretation like that that was so narrow that deprived, almost resulted in a, in a taking of the property um, could be upheld in court. And I, 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 I use that word taking uh, lightly. I, I don't know that it would ever be considered a taking, but. So basically the code as it stands we know is theoretically written to protect the property owner. And we know that that's going to be a major driving force going forward with the amendment to the land, amendments to the land development code that we're going to be doing with review. Um, we should be okay moving forward. And we're not going to go out and uh, send the, the tree police out to to ferret out all of these sawmills or you know, send drones up over Putnam County or anything like that. We're not looking for an illegal still. We're, 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 these people are gonna be able to continue operating their personal mills or their personal saws. Personal saws, as long as they're hobby right. uh, saws. And we're not gonna get into that right now because the code does not delineate that. Mr. Perry, are you having heartburn over what we're proposing? No, no ma'am, not at all. Okay. Okay. At that point, then, let me call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All opposed. Aye. Okay. Okay, Ms. I'll explain that. I just think that we could have done something. I, I think doing what the, the staff recommend is, would be worse than doing nothing, though. Right, I would think. Well, we've we've already voted. It's already voted, so I'm just that's why I voted. I think we should, you know, try to. Vote. Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you say that? I did. Okay. Okay. And I voted no because if Gabriel tells me that we can do it, and the only thing we needed to add was 40 horsepower or less. It's sort of ridiculous not to do something that simple. But that wasn't the only solution, and we also had adding that. We kicked it down the road. I know. We oh. kicked the can a lot. We're going to be restudying this, and we're probably going to be calling upon you to return with some of your presentation because this board is fluid and we may have new members. And your explanation of the different classes of saw types and saws that are used in the milling of wood was excellent. We do understand your position. We understand your passion and we appreciate your passion. With that being said, I thank you for representing 
your colleagues, your cohorts, and I thank you very much for exercising that civil liberty and right to come before us because that's very important. We may have said no today. We probably will not say the same thing the next time this comes up when we come to amending the, the LDC. But we want to protect your rights as much as we can with that. Um, thank you. Oh. Wait, just next. Pardon? We have to approve the old business. Do we have any old business? I, I do want, Gabriel has already told us that we have official approval of the comprehensive plan, that it is now official and we're operating under that. So anytime you see ag, you will not see ag one or two. Uh, you will see the different statuses that we put in the comp plan. Uh, also, I was speaking with him before the meeting about the status of hiring a consultant for doing the land development code. The first round that RFP was on the street did not elicit people who met the total qualifications and were not, it was not an adequate pool to pull from. So that is back out on the street now? No, ma'am, it is not. Um, it, it will be coming at some point. Um, okay. It has to be advertised still. And just as a clarification, it just, it didn't elicit the amount of interest that, um, that staff was looking for. Um, and so, Okay. That's. And uh, tell, Joseph has been hired since our last meeting. Yes, ma'am. Um, Joseph is uh, no longer here, but Joseph comes to us from St. John's County. Um, he has almost 15 years of experience in planning. Um, and uh, so far, he's proven himself to be a good asset good. to our department. So yeah. he fills the role that Wendy um, Hickey had. She retired okay. back in November. Okay. Yes, and we did not announce that at the November meeting blatantly. Uh, I did say a few things about Wendy. She did not want to be acknowledged as retiring in November. <laughs> so I did not do that. But we all appreciate the efforts and the work and the dedication that Wendy Hickey put into her position in planning and development. So uh, with that, is there any new business that needs to come before the board? I have one suggestion. Yes, sir. We have a newspaper in this town. Why don't we put something about our comp plan approval in that so everybody would know? Well, because uh, I, I would, my answer to that would be the newspaper charges us a, quite a bit of money for any kind of advertisement. And um, all right, we'll do it. At, I'll, I'll, you give me permission, I'll get it in there. For no, you. Let, let's let let's let Gabriel call uh, Sarah Cavasini and see if she would be willing to do an article on the approval of the yeah, comp plan. Yeah, do it as a public service. Yes. Yeah. Would you do that and I do it officially can. from your position rather than one of us talking to, to Sarah? Uh, I'd much rather have it come from staff because we don't really speak in public other than here. Um, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, okay, we're up to the, uh, is there any other new business? Yes, sir. I quit. <laughs> No, you can't. No, I, we got one good thing. I quit. I'm going out on a high. <laughs> I think I would. I would be remiss She's got one to held over for you for next meeting. Though. Uh, I think I would be remiss in uh, expressing this board's condolences to the family of Craig Sherrar. Craig was a very present with the, the uh, Putnam County Planning Commission through the years. Uh, I know going back when I first came on the commission, he was a regular mm -hmm. speaker and his dedication to doing things the right way in Putnam County did not go unmissed. And although I never totally agreed with him, <laughs> uh, we did have a very collegial relationship and I think we had a mutual respect. He offered a different perspective. <laughs> He did, yeah, sure. but uh, they were good because you have to have that other side of the story. So um, if you didn't know, Mr. Sherrard passed away uh, earlier or last Friday, I believe. Tuesday. 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 And um, he will be missed in Putnam County. Mm -hmm. He brought the South Florida instead of the New York version. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> he See, when, he, when, he, when I first met him the first time he spoke, my son lives right around the corner from him. Yeah. 
Out in uh, East Palakis? Yeah, in East Palakis, my son lives at 141 Pine Tree Road. Yeah, Mr. Right Schreyer lives at 147. He brought the global. So the drive, his driveway to go to my son's house is right beside his property, and he, and it kind of goes like behind it. Yeah. And uh, he definitely my son didn't even know it when I called. When I seen it in the paper, I called yeah. my son. He didn't even know it. Yeah. Um, it was kind of scary. He said. I think it's it's a sad thing, but I, I I do think he brought the global perspective, not just the New York perspective or the Miami <laughs> perspective, but. Uh, <laughs> He made, us, he made us do our jobs a little bit better, and, th and that's always something we want. And certainly Mr. Morris today has made us aware and thinking about things that I don't think many of us had on our radar screens. Right, mm -hmm. it definitely would have not been something we would No, I appreciate uh, him coming and explaining oh, all that, because I've seen little sawmills. No, I have too, and I've, I've There's been one to in them. South Putnam, but I guess it's not in operation no more. Yep, there I is. I have an idea what a big one and a little one is. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to call him up see if I can get some work done on one of those small ones. It, it's, it's not like when I lived in Georgia, they would, they would do aerial photographs and look for wisps of smoke coming up out of the woods. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the aerial photograph they had for years of Waycross Junior College, there were two of those off in the distance. And I thought, hmm, <laughs> what's back there? Do I have a motion or are there any corrections or additions to the November minutes as they were presented to us? Them. I second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All of those opposed? The minutes have been approved unanimously. And I'm looking for the signature page. Should be the last one. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Another good suggestion. <laughs> You are, you are on a roll today. I guess it's the long pants, Ken. Do we have a lottery? I don't know, but we should go play it. <laughs> Thank you all very much. This was, a, this was an arduous meeting, but it was one of those that really edified us and gave us a lot more information than we've had before. And I thank you. Has everyone signed the uh, visitation sheet? Where is the visit sheet? Joel is hoarding the visit sheet. But uh, Gabriel, what's coming up in March? St. Patrick's Day. And Joel, you didn't initial it. Um, we actually don't have anything set for March right now. We do have an application to remove an old PUD on a large tract um, between Palak and Bostwick, but um, there's there hasn't been much movement on that from the applicant, so okay. we're not sure if it'll come in March or April. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. You know where Rolling Hills is? No. You know where know Hudson where Avenue is? Yes, sir. If you take Hudson Avenue all the way to the south, you're in Rolling Hills. Oh, okay. Now, the land that they're clearing and doing uh. site work, it's going to be what? Behind Rolling Hills, it's a sod farm. It's a sod farm? Mm -hmm. Okay. The sod company want. bought it. And if you've I been... Mean, they may be planning something else, as far as I know, they're the uh, potato farm from well, Hastings bought it for sod. Clearing it the way they're doing, yeah, they could it definitely be sod. Mm -hmm. um, How many if, acres is that? I would uh, imagine there's probably... I think it's like 200-ish. I would say... Well, I don't know how far they go, but at least I'd say two to five. I think it's like 270 or something. I can't remember. They bought it a few years back. Joe, I've got a question for Joel. Do you have any anything coming up on the Johnny Morris properties down in uh, Satsuma? Wallaka and Satsuma? Yeah, just north the, of Wallaka. There is a property that um, is owned by the Floridian LLC it's based Floridian in Sports Missouri. Club. Uh, sorry? The Floridian Sports Club that's been there for years. Well, this one is uh, owned by an entity called the Floridian. Um, they, they're also based in Missouri. Um, the the property, so the, there's an application, a class three development application going through right now okay. for um, a, a 14 acre, I believe it's a 14 acre pond, and please don't quote me on that because I can't remember, but it's a large pond, very large, several acres. Um, and several berms along Cisco Dirt Road. That's the only application that we have um, in process right now. The Development Review Committee issued a preliminary development order. They have to come back and submit final site development plans, um, and then a final development order will be issued, and then they'll be able to move to 
technical review for issuance of their construction permit. Okay, I ask only because uh, both sides of County Road 309 now supposedly have been purchased by the, uh, mm -hmm. Johnny Morris. Yeah. And he's developing on both sides now. He's already put a big pond in on the old Floridian Sports Club side. And they must have had three or four drag lines working now for the last five months on the east side of County Road 309, which I believe was the old Treadneck property? Yes, yeah, it, was. it was all They Treadneck. dug tremendous lakes and berms and everything. So there's big development that's going to happen, they say. And again, it's I was, why I was curious if anything came before the county yet. So I, I haven't seen that development, but any kind of earth moving major grading work like that would have to come for a, a development review through the well, DRC. That's why and I then ask, because the, the property it had been purchased now at least three or four months ago, and the cranes have been in there now for at least two months or three months, mm -hmm. since Jan before January. Okay. A lot of land has been cleared in that area. Well, it's, it's a lot of clearing going on and a lot of new entrances and exits going onto County Road 309 and supposedly all the way up to the Acosta Creek Marina oh. has been purchased by the same owner. The, the, yes, the same owner, the Floridian LLC. Floridian has purchased. Sportsman. Um, that, that, that entity has purchased quite a bit of acreage yes. uh, between uh, Pomona Park and Wallack and then closer to Satsuma also. There's an antiquated subdivision that was It'll purchased. Be coming pretty soon then. The other question I would just ask so you can clarify to the board, if you've been reading the paper and seen action from the county commission, you know that there, will, there was an ordinance draft presented to the county commission dealing with biosolids and that will ultimately have to come through planning and development. The county commission waived the application fee, I believe, for that. But it will ultimately come to planning and development and will come through us as an ordinance uh, change. Um, J uh, Gabriel, what's the status on that for us? Um, we have no application and no active application for that ordinance change. Um, I have spoken with the applicant uh, or the person who will be the applicant or agent for the group, um, but I have no application. Now, will the agent be Mr. Kennedy? Yes, uh, from my understanding, okay. is what uh, that's what, that's what what's been represented this to me. This is different than what the zoning board is hearing next right. week. Right. Yes, ma'am. Zoning board is hearing the case for Jenny Girl, which we did a, yeah. a land use amendment on yeah. last summer, yeah. and they will be hearing the case for the application of Class B biosolids on a 57-acre piece of land in the middle of that uh, property that they own. They, they've reduced it to 47 now. They've reduced it to 47. Yes, ma'am. And the total site now is a 500 acre site. Um, Has DEP approved it? Their, their permit? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, we are expecting to have DEP, um, an expert witness from DEP at the meeting at the ZBOA. I, I'm awaiting confirmation of that. Um, I, I got a preliminary confirmation yesterday, but final confirmation should be coming soon. Uh, that meeting will be the 28th? Uh, no, no ma'am. Uh, it's the 16th. 16th, next Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's coming up before ZBOA. That, that's a special use permit that doesn't have to come before us. So that's what that is. Any other business that needs to come before the board? Nothing from Bass Pro. That's what we're doing. That's the Johnny Morris yeah, property. Yeah. That's your but they haven't submitted nothing through you? Well, the, the only property... The only application I have is the one I described, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I, I hesitate to say it's Bass Pro. It's not really Bass Pro. It's the Floridian LLC who may be working with. <laughs> Mr. Morris is the CEO of Bass Pro. Mr. Morris owns so, all of it. All right. We're adjourned at 643. I've got, I've got a